Welcome to Zero Page Homebrew, your best source for the newest Atari games. And here's Darcy as well. Welcome today. Boy, do we have something special for you. It's an Atari 2600 game, a brand new one, a fresh one from Champ Games. It's Tutankham Arcade. We have the exclusive world premiere of it. Darcy, have you ever played Tutankham? I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> no, probably not. I'm the worst. But that's what we're going to play today. And also, as a special treat, we also have John Champo live. No. Going to intro the game and talk to us about the game and tell us all about it. So I'm very, very excited. How did you manage that? that? Well, I had to talk to someone and talk to they talked to somebody and they went through John's agent and it took months, really. Uh, but he, he eventually agreed to it um, with some stipulations, of course, but uh, we got him. We got him in the end. So uh, he's here live with us today and I'm very, very excited. Um, live and not on film. Yeah, it's, it's one of those fake interviews where uh, everything's pre-recorded. They actually do that for um, some movie, uh, movie premieres. You know, they have those interviews. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, where I there's... guess if they're remoting in, it's like... Well, if they have to do like hundreds, mm -hmm. uh, they have like pad answers. It's like, well, here's your questions. You ask the questions and we've already pre-filmed the answers. And they actually used to do that for um, musicians. And in like the 60s or 70s, they would ship out a record, a pressed oh, record of the answers. That's funny. <laughs> and you would ask the questions and they'd put this record on and the answers would be on the record. It's so weird. <laughs> so weird. Uh, yes, today we have Tutankham for the Atari 2600 from Champ Games, uh, made by John Champo did the code design and sound and Nathan Strum as always doing the amazing graphics for the game. Uh, but first I want to thank the Twitch subscribers who help support the show and keep these uh, cats ha uh, happy and uh, full of treats. Yes, yes, yes they do. They do. Uh, 8-Bit Poet, Aldefer, Andrew Atari, Atari 800, XL World's Atari 1974, Atari Bip, Blipsqueak, Beer Polka, Bruno Stex, Captain Class, Kachel, Stony Mal, Charles Whelan, Chitlala, Cyrano Rebo, Dianoid, Dan DVC, Daryl 970, Drexel, Dr. Moo, Cows, Gamma Dev, Gisberto Rondinella, Great Defender, a Ground Trooper, Haroldo Ju, a J G K S P S X. I gotta spell it out. There's just no way I could say that word. Um, Johnny W C. He's there. Um, Kabuto Coder, Coder, Carl G. Karakak, Croco 2600, Developer, Lambda Express, Mandy Sipping, T, Mark Yannis, Mark Spacing, Mick Muse, Mike Sol, Mike Littell, Miss Command, MK Smith, Mr. Fix, Nathan Strum, Nathan Strum as well, Neo Media, Nostalgic, uh, Pseudographics, Cog, Arantrowitz, Rendered Ghost, Repentless, Fiji, Retro Gamer, Revan Tully, Ricardo Pam, Swix, Six Beat, Six Sweet, Smitty B, Spice Horse, Spinley, S. Ramirez, Tiki Dan, KT, Foes, Team Events, Trek, MD, Tweeny, Vexor X, Vintage Game Memories, BBG, Double Down, X, Ken X, and if you want to support the show like the d train and double down did just before it started hit subscribe and it's free with amazon prime so you don't even have to uh use uh, uh one penny of your money and there's a little button that you have to like find if you want to use amazon yeah. prime but it's there it's a little hunch you have to it's poke around there. you you can find it i believe in it. you you can do it confidence uh, we're not going to do a poll question. We're not going to do any news or mail or anything because we want to get right to the good stuff. We want to get right to John and the new game, right? Yes. Uh, we could do a real quick poll. Do you want a poll today? <laughs> One for yes, two for no. <laughs> and then what poll would you like? No, we're going to do layers and time. layers of polls <laughs> to get to the actual poll. <laughs> um, so uh, I would like to uh, introduce to you, uh, John Champo, uh, master of the Atari 2600, pushing boundaries with every new game he releases. Uh, absolutely uh, creative force on the Atari 2600. Um, I don't know what else I can say about him. He's amazing. Here he is. It's John Champo. Welcome to the show, John. Am I online? Yeah, yes. you, you are live on tape. Oh, right. No. <laughs> You're actually You're on live. live on welcome, tape. welcome, welcome. Well, thank you for that intro. You could have just said cheating instead of uh, all this, uh, you know. 
Oh, I mean, that does sum it up, really. The cheater of the Atari 2600, <laughs> not me. playing by the rules, pushing boundaries, breaking laws. Right, it's John. <laughs> <laughs> welcome, welcome. So uh, always happy to have you on the show yeah. uh, to show off one of your new games, uh, always looking eagerly towards it. Um, this is Two Ton Calm. Yeah. It, it, oh, it, my goodness. It's been a while since I've revealed the new game on your show. I think the last one was maybe Elevator Agent, like a year ago, yes. maybe. So I think so. Yeah. Has it been that long? Yeah, Just well, I took six by. months to, off to publish stuff, so I didn't really develop anything. And then, you know. Yeah, you had a, a big transition yep. and had to rebrand all your games and... Uh, Hey, you made it through to the other side, yep. That's, lot, which is awesome. Yeah, a lot of thanks for, <laughs> to Nathan Strong. So, yeah, but it felt good to finally yep. get the energy and the inspiration to start a new game. So uh, um, this is this, oh, is, this is exciting for me, too. So I, was, I, yeah. I couldn't wait. For it, so. <laughs> the, new, the new era of champ games. Yes. Yes. Error. <laughs> error. <laughs> new era. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Um, so before we before we um, get into Tutan Calm, let's just get a little background okay. of w your history with Tutan Calm uh, in the arcade and also on the home console. So did you play Tutan Calm in the arcade around when it came out? Yes, actually, I, I have a fond memory of when I played. I could tell you exactly when and where I played it for the first time. Oh. Do it. Well, maybe not. Tell exactly. us. <laughs> it was definitely it was between eighth grade and high school. It should have been um, summer of 82. My brother and I flew yeah. down to uh, um, Florida to visit my uncle on People's Express. $69 round trip, if anyone knows oh, remembers yeah, that. Yeah. So, But anyway, he had an arcade <laughs> there that we went to all the time. And Tutankham, that was the first time I had played it. They also had like Sinistar, Joust. Yep. Popeye. Nice. Yeah, a bunch of it. It was all nice. games that, that they didn't have back east, as we like to say. Even though I was, I was still, <laughs> I was still east, but Connecticut. So uh, yeah. Anyway, I, I, was, I always thought it was a, a very wonderful game, a good mix of uh, adventure and action. So uh, um, yes. I was looking forward to bringing this one to the uh, Atari. Most of the games I make are, sh sh you know, shoot 'em ups or stuff like that. So or um, platformers, yeah. stuff like that. So this is about our first foray into like an adventure type game even though it's not strict yeah the lightest of rpgs if you yeah, could say yeah, very very but yeah actually playing it you know this version that i made i was getting some ideas like hey this would actually be a pretty good framework for an rpg where you know a more of an action yeah adventure, nothing nothing too crazy but we be collecting you know power-ups and weapons and well, who knows? Yeah, yeah, and and you've done you've done a maze game before. You've done La Ladybug, which is moving moving characters. You've done um, yeah, Wizard of War, Wizard of War as well. So you've done similar things to that, but those were single screen games. Yeah. this is this is a little bit different. It does and it scrolls horizontally. Yeah, I, I had to tap um, into my uh, actually the uh, scrolling engine I use from Mappy for this one. Or at least I was inspired. Ah, uh, so, so it was kind of development-wise a combination of a Nappy and, uh, like I'd say, Wizard of War is probably closer to, or even yeah, mostly like Wizard of War. So yeah, because Wizard of War has shooting left and right. This has shooting left and right. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. And yeah, it's spawning monsters. Yeah. And the way you yep. move, it's all cell-based. Where you know. You can't stop in between two cells. You always have to be on a cell boundary. So um, that's kind of how yep. Wizard of War was too. So Ladybug was more was free moving. So it was. Uh, so anyway, right. Yeah, so it was it was, it was fun <laughs> fun to do it. So, so um, let's talk about the home conversions, the classic home mm -hmm. conversions specifically, because it will be compared to the Atari Twenty Six Hundred from Parker Brothers. Yes. Did you play that one um, back when it uh, was out? I did not. Um, the main reason yeah. is just not because it's mostly by, by then I'd already moved on to the 8-bit by the time that came out. So uh, um, right. I was playing games on that instead. But I did end up playing it like when I got back to Atari back in 2000. I thought um, Parker Brothers yeah. did a pretty good um, version of it. And uh, I know I've heard a lot of people speak fondly of it. So um Considering the yeah, limitations, I, I think they did a, a very good job. So, 
Yeah, in in prep, of course, I played the the Parker Brothers version as well. Yeah, uh, just recently, I played it before. Um, yeah, they kind of they they rotate it ninety degrees. Well, they kind of have to pretty yeah, much because when you scroll, yeah. uh, you know, scrolling on the Atari without something like the arm, the the cheating part I was mentioning before, um, is is very very <laughs> difficult yeah. because uh, you know it takes up almost an entire frame to do it. So uh, uh, oh, having yeah. the advantage of having the arm. You know, that was the first thing I wanted to correct. Yeah, so uh, as far as the Parker Brothers version, I think it's a good game. It just didn't feel like Tutankham to me, and that's... No. Which, which is fine, but, but as a dungeon crawler adventure game, I think, uh, you know... I think it's pretty I, good. I think it's pretty good, yeah. so... Um, but, you know, my, my... Yep, it's got the enemies, it's got the warps, yep. it's got the things you need to collect. Yeah, and you're trying to get... It's the, got the maze. Yeah, get the, 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 the keys and things like that, so... Yeah. The enemies are pretty dumb in it yeah they kind of <laughs> in like, tutankham yeah. parker brothers yeah. but uh, but they suffice they suffice to block your way and uh, give you trouble yeah that's for sure exactly and you still can only fire left and right so it's still uh you know still still challenging yeah. still the flash bomb so it's uh it you know it has yeah. some elements of tutankham just didn't really play like it and, uh, you know it's kind of what champ games tries to strive for just to capture the essence of the game and then add on to it as yeah. well so you know I'm hoping that we were able to do that here because it didn't really, you know, until I actually got it going, I was like, I don't know if this is going to work, but it, it seems to, uh, it seems to have that <laughs> toot and calm vibe to it. So hopefully, uh, we all think so. Um, excellent. Um, I think all my other questions are good for after we start playing. It. Yeah. I can say up, up front, I did the sounds. It's the first time I've done sounds for a game since, um, Concourse of Mars. Now it's only a couple of blips and bloops and stuff like that. So um, this one, <laughs> this one has music in it and stuff like that. So uh, you know, um, I, hopefully uh, it sounds okay. But uh, I, 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 I took a scientific approach to it, where I was actually measuring frequencies and looking things oh. up and stuff like that. And surprisingly, yeah. it actually seemed to work pretty well. I mean, obviously the Atari is a little off tune, but. Uh, um, just limited. by doing that, I was like yeah. looking at waveforms <laughs> and going, okay, I can see where that's descending. I can, you know, see the actual length of a note. I can, I had like a guitar tuner where I was actually picking up the frequency and got some freeware. Oh. That's kind of how I, uh, how I put it all together. So, uh, do, do you have a musical background at all? Yeah, well, I, do you play I, any instruments? Play, Cattail. Yeah, I, I play a <laughs> piano by ear, so that kind of helps. Oh, so yeah, there you so, go. Yeah, so that's it. So. Apologies ahead of time okay. if they they seem a little off tune, but um, Nathan actually said they look pretty good. But then again, he's the graphics guy, so uh, there you go. Yeah, yeah, not it, not his forte. Okay, um, so let's uh, let's load it up. One second. There we go. There we go. Okay, so let's switch over all my stuff into video game mode. I think we're good to go here. And here we go. We're going to start with, um, I know there's multiple control schemes. Yes. Um, yeah. Right now I'm going to start with a two button joystick. Okay. Um, to show off that. And then we'll move on to a twin stick. Okay. Um, t for people who don't have um, a Genesis compatible joystick. Yes. And, and we'll talk about the different control schemes yeah, as well. Yeah, I would say, and. It's going to sound complicated when we explain how it plays, but I can say right now that when I played it, Nathan played it, and Jurgen, he's uh, been testing the PAL version. It seems very intuitive yep. what I was able to implement because Tutankham is complicated in the sense that it was a two joystick game, and plus you had a flash bomb. So with uh, one joystick right. and one button, it was, you know, I had to be very creative to be able to have the game played the same way. Um, so there's ways to fire backwards and still move the other way with one button so it's all right but it's, it all seems pretty intuitive to me and hopefully uh, everyone else thinks the same way obviously the recommended way to play is two joysticks a two button controller works very well also but um personally i only play with a single button that's all i've been testing with as you know i uh got the bill to you a little bit late today because i forgot to test the dual stick <laughs> quad Atari one i hope this actually worked and it works great <laughs> but um oh good but, and and you've had practice with 
um, twin stick shooter games already with Robotron. Yes, exactly. So yeah, so. It's, it's not like it's you're doing it from scratch. Right. So that's good. Exactly. And Robotron was a little bit different because you have a free open environment where you can just run and uh, fire yeah. at the same time. And auto fire works pretty well. Two and Con, you can't. Really, An eight way firing as exactly. well. Exactly. Two and Con, you can't really have an auto fire because part of the challenge is the delay and the long shot is that if you just had that going all the time, you end up missing you know, half the things you were shooting for. And also mm. um, a key part of Tutankham, it really is a dungeon crawl in a sense where you're just not going around blasting. It's really about patience, finding a nook where you yep. can hide, shooting without yep. moving. Um, so those are the things I took into consideration when I designed the uh, one button, one, one button control yeah. scheme. So but anyway. I think I've yeah. defended myself enough. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> disclaimer, disclaimer, disclaimer. Yeah. yeah I, I, okay, so let's, uh, let's get into it. So uh, this is an exclusive world premiere. Okay, so go Does down to... Does this mean to... it's set? Did you play with it? I didn't touch it. Okay, I didn't do good. anything. Now it's good. Okay, so let's go down to so today's date. So it wasn't date. good, though. No, it was not. Good thing I was paying attention. <laughs> <laughs> That's today's date. It is. Tutankham Arcade. So you've, re you've named it to distinguish, you said, from... The Tutankham Parker Brothers yes, version. Yes, and when it's booting up, if you press up on the splash screen, it will show you the uh, the version number. I'm going to put that in all my games. That way, there's no confusion as to uh, what version you're playing. Yes. So, so you'll see very, it had, had a dot Z at the end, which means a zero-page home build. So, but yeah. Anyway, um, that's that's very smart to do because some, especially if you name your games all exactly the same every release. Yep. I put dates on my releases, and and a lot of other people do, but some people just Name it, and then you're like, what version is yes. this? I have no idea. Yeah. Exactly. So, Okay, let's do it. Is it going? It's working. It says Quadtari left, right, save key. Does not have the Quadtari in the left, but it does have a two-button joystick. Oh, let it, hey, what are you doing? Let it, there, stop. <laughs> I was doing it wrong. I'm sorry. <laughs> it was I'm sorry. Flipping through the screens. Tutankham Arcade, one player, novice, 2024 champ games. If anyone was paying attention, you would have seen the uh, version. Oh, That's okay. why I was pressing up, because I was told Snake. that that would work, and it did indeed work. <laughs> Snake, 20 <laughs> points. Bird, 40 points. Bat. Bat, 60 points. It's so bright to the lights. Key, 500 points. Lock, 1,000 points. Oh, and there's the score. So you've got uh, different score tables for each novice, etc., etc. Yes, yep, as usual. So we use the old uh, yep. Champ Games template for this one. So Coding and design, music and sound. You've got your name twice in the credits. Yep, I know. I, mean, <laughs> nice. I, can't, I can't see my name enough in lights. I mean, I have it all over. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I write it down. Oh, it's going oh, into it's the demo. demo. Okay. That's so press cool. the button. Let's get out of the demo. Okay. Um, so let's just go through the options uh, quickly of what is available. So there's one player and two player. Yeah. If you press the uh, select button, I know it's not. Uh, actually, well, if you have a second joystick, you don't, it is couch compliant. Oh, okay. so you can just move the, uh, you can press this <laughs> button on the second joystick. I don't have that plugged in. <laughs> yeah. Ah, there you go. So two player, one player. Okay. And one of the players is green, and you get bonus points for that. <laughs> All right, good. Yep, red and green. <laughs> um, and so we have, oh, go back, uh, novice, standard, advanced, and challenge, challenge. mode. Yeah, I can Ch say challenge that mode. challenge mode right now, we don't have, um, we have implemented a lot of things, but I didn't include them in this build. There's like new monsters, there's some other traps, um, there's power-ups, oh. so... Uh, but we were still kind of working on that, so I'd, I'd rather save that for another reveal. Yep. But right now, if you play Challenge, it's going to be a more difficult version of uh, of Advance. But um, okay. but there are, like, okay. we have, like, a mummy in there, um, some locust flies, uh, jackal, uh, some other cool things, too, <laughs> so, um, that we have planned in nice. Challenge mode. So, it's, so it'll, be a, it'll be fun to do that. So that's always the part I, I like Excellent. doing. So once you get this done, it's actually being creative. Different version, so. Yeah. 
making making it your own, adding to it so that uh, people that are used to the normal game get something a little different. Yep. Um, so let let's see that version number actually. Go up. Uh, it it's only at the beginning when it's loading. Yeah. Oh, okay. Flash screen, yeah. So. Okay. Because uh, up switches between the screens. So. so novice is the lowest level, right? Yeah. So the difference between the um, um, three uh, skill levels is first advanced is mostly like the arcade. Um, um, okay. So novice, you you start off with five lives, standard four lives, and uh, advanced three. The same for uh, um, challenge as well. Also determines how many flash bombs you start with and how many you can carry at, the, at for max. So if novice, the max you can have is three. You start with three, um, standard two, and then advanced, so like the arcade, is one. So you get and basically you get a new one each life if you are not already at the max number. So, so those flash bombs mm -hmm. really come in handy. So, also other things are the maximum number of enemies on the screen um, decreases with right. a lower um, um, skill levels and also how fast they spawn, how fast they move and things like that. So, of course, you know, as you play the game, so once you've gone through four rounds, then novice will be a little bit more difficult, eventually getting up to standard and standard will go to get to advanced and vice versa. So, right. Um, right, right, right. Yep. So the, the, there's a uh, big difference. Th Thomas noted that there was no, uh, color error in the champ games logo. Cause my, my, my system's very special. It has slight color timing issue. Oh, did you so get it fixed? You did, you did a great job. Yeah, it's it's all fixed. Oh, wonderful. Good. Yeah, that always annoyed me, too. Yeah, so <laughs> everything <laughs> annoys me to no end. That's yeah. why my system's so, so good for a testing system, because yep. it has all, some all strange quirks, exactly. timing. Yeah. yeah, that's perfect. Yeah. Okay, I think we're ready to dive into it. So, Darcy, give it a go. So, keep in mind, everyone, Darcy has never played this game. So, let's give it. And a I'm playing well, novice, though. You <laughs> might want to tell him. So, how let's to give play. a quick, so quick but, tutorial. Button one will fire to the yeah. right. Button two will fire to the left, and both buttons with its joystick centered will activate your flash bomb. Flash bomb kills everything on the screen. You're very generous. Screen. James prefers me to go in in the dark. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. Vulnerable, yeah. but you are nice and you're not a psychopath like he well, is. Darcy, if, <laughs> so I appreciate if it. you look bad, I look bad. So <laughs> that's <laughs> right. <game> is terrible. <laughs> oh, okay. So Darcy has pressed the button. Uh, so I noticed something when I pressed the button. Uh, we're supposed to mention th possible yes. bugs, right? So it the icons it went from a single to both icons showed up for, for just a split second like, is it two people yeah yeah now it's on two people oh it's probably because of the did i press I this know. button see it switched to two pe people yeah really like and i think it actually is and on it was two when people. i pressed the button yeah so it's it on might two. be my weird you joystick back. okay you might be pressing the wrong button too so uh oh. there's a solid chance that that is the case okay okay Turn i'm gonna press button. the other button but it doesn't do anything. Okay. No. Wait, put it to two player. Oh, yeah, there we go. There we go. Yeah, <laughs> solved <right>. it. <laughs> so it's something to do with your joystick, I guess. I uh, Probably. But we'll test that out. So we've got some uh, choices of maps here. Yeah, so basically uh, we have... Arcade uh, Flip. Yeah, so there's uh, eight maps in there. So you have the four from the arcade and then four from that are new ones. Actually, they're, they were used from a version called Tutankham Returned. It's a PC game that was designed. I found it on YouTube. I actually oh. contacted the uh, the creator of that and asked for his permission to use his mazes. He had seven different mazes that he'd created. And I picked, oh, wow. so I picked four of them. So he'll be credited in the uh, manual if you get a free copy as well. But um, So yeah. That, wow, that, that's awesome. Yeah, that was very nice. So <laughs> if anyone's ever played Tutankham Returns, you may recognize the uh, four mazes that uh, that we have for the, uh, the champ champ mazes i did have to slightly change them based on how what my engine supports and the location that he had a few things um, but they're mostly uh, pretty close to what he had so um and the, the flip versions are basically the same mazes but they're flipped vertically so like this oh okay. so th yep. they end up feeling and playing like completely different levels in my opinion so uh there's uh an easy right. way to get eight new different mazes um new mazes without having to uh, you know, yeah. use too much Do, ROMs. Uh, use up more. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And there was another game, uh, Pit Cat, I believe, also did that as well. They flipped 
uh, everything horizontally in the game. Yeah. And it's like, oh, you can play all the levels. And they feel, they do feel very different because you're like, I'm not used to moving yeah. left to right. And, yeah. and in this, you wouldn't be used to moving up and down. It was actually recommended to me by uh, Jurgen, uh, Bomberman94. And uh, he said that yeah. um, Dion did that for Load Runner. Is that true? I don't remember that, that for what, load runner maybe yeah maybe not but i haven't made it through all the levels yet yeah well <laughs> it if takes you do, a, now you it's do them a big all game all flip now so <laughs> <laughs> that's right do all of them all over again 150 of them yeah. so which one should we pick i just to replicate the arcade just arcade then. so that we start yeah just arcade yeah, okay exactly let's do that okay so nope. you get the key mm -hmm. head for the keys you can shoot the guys and yep. then you head to the lock if you look at the map you can only so the map at the top shows where you are which is the yellow dot the blue um, dots are the um, enemies. The blinking red is the key. And then that X kind of thing is where you're actually trying to get to. You can go down in that. So you want to go to that uh, little cavern at the top there, go down in there, and it'll warp you to the... Uh... The other side. Yeah, yeah it's uh, the secret path. Oh, there we go. Yep. That's where we need to go. There you go. And then I got okay. So you got the basics. There we go. Okay, now go collect the, the uh oh, yeah. Good. Hey. Head towards the, the lock. Oh you're killing everything. Points! Uh oh. Oh no. Oh, no. Dead. Oh you did it! Get out of there! Move! Start moving! Go, 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 go! Uh, no! Don't hang around there! Go! I used the bomb, is that? Uh, oh, that's good. Oh, head to the lock. Yeah, I, I, but I was so excited about having survived certain death that I, I lost complete uh, control of my uh, nervous system. Yes. Oh. And, uh, no, don't go down there. You. Oh. No, I'm skilled. <laughs> Apparently. That was intentional. Excellent. Shows the map. That's cool. Bonus. Very nice. It says map. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty good. This is really, really, really nice looking, John. Snakes! I hate snakes! <laughs> so right now it's uh it looks like it's on auto fire left and right as you move. Um it's gotta be something wrong with your ah! joystick. It looks like it seems like your button is stuck or something like that. Because uh That kind of sounds right now. I have a very I have a custom joystick here. That is wired for the links. <laughs> okay, well, that's, so there that's might why. Be... So you probably want to use an Atari joystick for an Atari game. <laughs> a 2600 game. <laughs> um, yeah, so, yep. yeah, so, yeah, it, it's definitely... Uh, it's, yeah. uh, it, it, I mean, it, it is working. Yeah, the fact that it, it, in a it's sense. a quad Atari connected probably... That's why. Yeah. It's, it's it's thinking this is like two joysticks in one almost. It, it, it's, it's, it's seeming like that. Yeah. So I think it's just a configuration of my joystick. It's kind of working for Darcy because it's firing towards the direction he's moving. But he is missing that factor of being able to fire backwards oh, while go. moving forwards, right? Yep, exactly. Um, so he's not going to do too well. But he's actually doing pretty good. <laughs> I mean, 12,000 is pretty good. Yeah, he is. He's got three flash bombs, too. Wait. Come back. Come oh, that back. is good. You already have a key. And on this, you can only carry one key, okay. which kind of uh, throws a wrench into p your plans when you're uh, ah. on some levels. You have to go, unlock, and then come back and uh, get the next key. Actually, in challenge mode, I plan on adding two colored, two different colored keys with uh, different color locks. Uh, so you'll have to like collect like, oh. the white key to get But it's not going to be too complicated, just two different kinds. <clears throat> and if you collect the wrong key... Then you go to the right, right key and it'll just swap them for you. So um, that's a couple of the features we think of adding. I didn't do that. <laughs> just one second. Oh, there's a bug. What's that? Uh, the characters are gone. What characters? Oh, I see. On the front screen. That's funny. Uh, no. <laughs> no, it's just different characters. That was uh, Stealth Bob. I think it went to two players again, though. Yeah, you that's forgot actually to my do good trick. indicator. No, no, that my no, no, you got to put it to two. No, 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 I'm testing it. Oh, I see. I'm trying to get my. Uh, I think I'm not going to be able to use this joystick. I thought it was going to be tricky. No. Okay. We're going to switch joysticks to a twin stick right now. 
and a quad tari. Just so we can show that off. Yeah, Jorgen um, saw that bug on the title screen. I'm not sure what's causing that. I've never seen it, so I haven't been able to um, diagnose it or uh, troubleshoot it, but apparently yeah. using the wrong joystick uh, triggers it. <laughs> so can you... to do it. So do you have to use a quad tari to play with two joysticks? Mm, or it's just easier in your case? Well, because I'll let you John answer that, one. but I'm guessing no. You just can't use the save key, correct? What's that? Uh... Um, to use two joysticks, you don't necessarily need a quad tari. Right, that is correct. You you could plug it into... Okay, so I have a question about the... What's, what's the thing you plug into the second port and you can save? Is it just called save key? No, it has different... And it does voices, it right? Tar um, well, there's a... Yeah, there's yeah. a save key. Yeah which just saves, and then there's also the Atari box, which has a save key, but also can talk. Yeah, and in but case this, you're lonely and you have a friend. That's right. Um, so is there a reason it can't be a pass-through? So that you could also play and have it record saves and what have you? Uh, no. No, no, too complicated. That didn't sound like a very satisfying answer. <laughs> No, too complicated. <laughs> I have to swap. So, things, too things complicated things. sounds like the answer is yes. Uh, uh, I guess you could time. Otherwise, you wouldn't it, qualify it. But it, just, it doesn't work that way right now. Ah. <laughs> uh, okay, so let me. Okay, now we're working. Okay. So oh. here we go. Wait, wait. Let no. Me reset. Okay, no, it's fine. Which button? Um, so that's your joystick. Okay. And I believe these I two buttons. Can you or... shoot up and down or just side to side? Oh, actually, I have to reboot it because ah. it may be upset about me plugging in the uh, quad tari. I'll figure it out. Here we go. That's why I play novice, so I, I get extra lives. Uh, now it's quad, left. quad tari. There we go. Gotcha. Uh, okay. So I press that button, or that button, okay. Or Top. That button? Oh, okay. Yeah, he was saying that it's it is now the button the... on the second joystick does change from one to two players. I think I know what the problem is. I was reading up the chat, uh, double down, and uh, posted in there. I think what the issue is is okay. that uh, Genesis controllers are the uh, two paddle lines are uh, have a high signal. I'm just doing That's the shooting gallery version. Game pad. So I think what happens oh. in these joysticks is that one of the paddle lines is wired up because technically it's not needed, but it's needed for detection um, to simulate uh, safe checks. So I've seen, I've seen that before. So. Um, that's, so that's why I think this is a quad guard because only one of the pins is right. It's probably get too complicated. I think that's what's happening. <laughs> That 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 makes that makes sense. It's a it is a special joystick that I plugged in, yeah. so it it is wired oh. completely differently and giving different signals yeah. to the the twenty six hundred. Yeah, but I mean, it, it, it interpreted be, it be completely fixed, different. Just, you have to connect a wire. You have to just have to connect a high wire to the uh, paddle, the paddle line that's not. Prepared, so that's it. It wouldn't mm. put in a hard head. How do I do the bomb? Which button is that? Oh, which button is the bomb? Uh, when you have a uh, two joystick. Configuration. It's the button on the stick that you fire. With. Okay. So any any sense, of the maybe. two, well, the button, yeah, the black or red. Not sure which which one it is on this. Um. Okay. So let me get up my questions for you. Um. So Robotron 2684 and Tutankham are in the arcade are both twin stick games. Is there something special that about twin stick games that drew you to both of them, or were they both were they both more about the gaming? It was just about the game. Actually, I I prefer not to play twin stick games. To be honest with you, <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I like I like Robotron, and you know this this game I enjoyed playing in the arcade as well. But yeah, I always found it to be kind of complicated. Of course, I'm working on another 
dual stick game that will be revealed in a couple months, but uh, I can't I can't seem to get away from them. But I guess it's a nice way to sell. So you love twin sell, stick games, then? It's a nice way to sell five Taris, right? But... <laughs> there you go. True. Very true. But, um, so when you pl when you play um, this game and also Robotron, do you use a twin stick or do you use a single stick? Yeah, this particular game I've only played with um, a single stick. And I, I find it fine. But like I said before, I said it to you, I did play with the dual stick and it was it was awesome. It was much much more enjoyable. Um, I was yeah. able I was able to do do better. But that's, I've gotten pretty good at the single um, button as well. Uh, Robotron, there is only one way to play that, and that's dual stick. In my opinion, so. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah so, it's it's just so, so much harder with, uh, so much easier with a twin stick to shoot in all the directions yes. and move wherever you want. Yeah, yeah. I guess also right? really cool. Yeah, like just like the it's cool to be able to Do control two things it in that once. way. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, run it's away hard, from something yeah, yeah. and shoot it is is super cool. I mean, I'd be hopeless at it, but I I I suppose if I practiced, I might not stay hopeless. At it. Practice. <laughs> <laughs> so let's put in Darcy's name because it is actually saving it. Yeah, I, I did reserve some <laughs> spots in there on the save key for the, for this game. So hopefully, uh... oh, so these are real spots yes. that you've reserved already. Yep. Okay, good. Yeah. Um, anybody, if anybody has any questions, just post them in the chat with question in all capital letters so I can see it. Um. So. Jack Pelovich, designer of Gauntlet, referenced Tutankham as one of uh, the influences for his game. I can see a ton of similarities between like this game and Gauntlet as they're both shooting uh, maze games with tons of enemies. Um, did Gauntlet ever cross your mind Actually, when uh, said that. Yeah, working when on this? I was thinking of Gauntlet when I was designing this game. So make a, the big difference with Gauntlet is that you have a lot more enemies. Uh, the maximum that you'll have sure. here is eight. So Gauntlet could, could oh, cause okay. an issue when you have like all those ghosts, like ten thousand ghosts ch chasing you. You know. Um, <laughs> now, is the limit eight on a, like on a line? Because I know on Zookeeper you had quite a few on the same line, and it looked really, really good. Yeah, no, it's just um, a, it's in the arcade itself. The maximum is eight. You know, after that, um, I think the game oh, would, be, okay. would get too difficult. To be honest with you. Um, Oh, it's so, our, yeah, yeah, it's difficult enough with eight. Yeah, so they all, sure. you know, the way things ramp up is, uh, well, in this game, he's playing novice, so the maximum you'll see is five until he clears four levels. Then I'll go up to six, seven, and then eventually eight, which is what it starts off in uh, advance. Um, yeah. So, uh, so the lamps at the top, they look like lamps or people, depending on the magic genie that that's the clears bomb, the right? screen. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I see. Those are the flash bombs. And the timer is basically serves two purposes. One, it, uh, if you don't finish level and the timer reaches zero, you won't be able to fire anymore. Um, so, which is oh, geez. probably certain death. You can, <laughs> you can still use your flash bomb. Obviously, you want to finish before that runs out. They obviously put that in the arcade yeah. to stop for scoring exploits and uh, and things like that. But also... Uh, Wasting their time yeah. and not getting more quarters. Yeah, and, and, you get, <laughs> yeah. and you get points for time as well. So the faster you get. Okay. As far as collecting those, like the uh, rings and the uh, crowns, um, it says mystery on the scoring thing. That's why I set the arcade. Oh! It's really, I cracked the mystery basically. It's 500 points for the first one you collect in a level. Then it goes to 1,000, 1,500, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, 5,000. So it basically uh, encourages you to collect more per level. Because, the, right. you know, the, so if you collect four of them, then you go and get the fifth one. So it's going to be 1,000. So it's, you know, it's risky. Right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, oh God, yeah. God. <laughs> Going back to Gauntlet. Um, now the, the Quad Tari does now exist, so um, you'll be able to play lots of players in Gauntlet. And so is is that... It, like, is the limitation it, of your... of a kernel that you could make with the with the arm eight on a line, or how many things... Because in... Uh, There's no limitation as far as that. So as you can see in Robotron... Oh, I have to go back know, in to get the key, another uh, key. You know, 50 on the screen at once, so it's, uh, it's, it's not limited by yes. that. Yes. really just limited by, play, ah! by playability and, and 
flicker because if you have four people now, yes. so now you always will have. Oh, you, know, you would have to have like black backgrounds, have them always flickering at 30 hertz, kind of like when I use the robot more. And then, yeah, even at that situation, if all four players are playing at the same, you know, typically you're not gonna have four people playing. It. I mean, it sounds better, but yeah. we're not all 12 years old. You know, it's like the <laughs> and, you know, getting two people to play a big gauntlet that, party. Come on over. Yeah, so I think gauntlet would be kind of cool, but you know, it's not. I think that's a party pushing idea, the limitations. So probably not the best uh, career. Oh, well, you could work with them. Yeah, uh, reach out to it them. Would be an yeah. Atari game at that point, but yeah. But, uh, that's true. That's yeah, true. So. Yeah, it'd be a, it'd be a different thing. Yeah. Uh, so I was I was in anticipation of of this show. I was ah! practicing. The Tutankham arcade version. Um, it's really hard. Yes. The arcade version is so hard. Um, especially the layout where they essentially just have a, a, a place where they're spawning. Monster generator, and it's yep. right in line with where you have to go right by a generator. Um, and it makes it so difficult. So how good are you at the arcade level version of Tutu Kong? I can get to probably like level six or seven. So I've, uh, I've oh. certainly gotten, actually I've gotten farther than that. Maybe like, maybe level 12. So, oh, wow. It's definitely, okay. uh, that's good. That's the thing to say is that, you know, watching the game, and like I said, I'd never disassemble code, but you know, I watched or play the game and try to get a feel as to how things work. So basically there's three modes that you have to keep an eye on is that uh, new enemies spawn about every two seconds and whether the actual length of the game and still level later on in the actual level so maybe a little bit more a little less um, then every so often it goes into super spawn mode where it basically will spawn you know multiple enemies all at once you know, four or five but you also have right. to wait for every so often you get a pause for four seconds before they don't spawn at all. Um, and that's what you, this is the part. That's what you got to have to specifically. Make this ah. level is is the part I get stuck yeah, on in the. So arcade. this one you have to basically go up to where that um, that thing is right there. In the um, yeah. You stay there and just fire left and right. But Darcy seems, uh, to, okay. Darcy seems to move all the time. So, but if you actually go to that <laughs> thing and stop, and then just move fire yeah. left and right. And then you make the move and you see the pause in the, uh, the spawn. Okay, that's the secret. Yeah, okay. So th I mean, that's how you do it. It really is a crawler. That's why there's a lot of time in there. Because you'll notice you'll finish with 30, 40 seconds all the time. It's because, you know, as the levels get more difficult, if you're going to make them through, you have to be patient. Or you'll, you'll get killed all the time. So, And, of course, a, a very... Yeah. Um, nicely timed flash bomb because once you do a flash bomb also that yes. disables the spawns for you know a certain amount of time based on your skill level as well so oh yeah. so, okay that's so good it kills that's everyone good and know. then it gives you like a second or two depending on what level you're on <laughs> yeah i only remember the flash bomb when they're coming from the top or the bottom <laughs> yes yeah it's the only time exactly. I remember ah, that. Flash bomb. otherwise i'm just like ah it is actually <laughs> possible in, and in the arcade running. too when they're above you and below you to shoot them um, mm. If you time your what? fire How? exactly, because they don't kill you when they're overlapping you, um, just touching you. They have to overlap you um, a little bit more. So as they're coming down, if uh... you fire while you move down, you'll actually shoot them, even though you're on the same horizontal plane. Oh, wow. So um, there's actually a cool video on, uh, on YouTube where someone did, um, I forgot what it's called. It's something that they do with speed runs where they um, basically program a computer to play to come. And you can see that. Uh, oh, okay. Have you seen these things? Uh, I forgot what it's called. It's actually called something. I, it's called like. Uh, um, yeah. T um. Anyway, um, the, the, the whole point yeah. being is that if you've watched that, you can see that what they do is they do save states, they reverse it, and then they. Tool assisted runs. Yes, exactly. Tool assisted. That's exactly what it is. So, yeah. um, so, so they did that, and you can see that the guy playing. I didn't realize that when I first watched him. Well, this guy's amazing. He keeps shooting. <laughs> like things above him below him. Like, His timing's oh. impeccable. And but then I found out that it's all done by by a computer, so it is possible to actually shoot yeah. things that are above and below you. Um, and and that's why they do those tool assisted speed runs because to to find out these little tricks that oh it's possible maybe not for a human maybe for a really skilled yeah. human but it is possible to do yeah I have done it um, in this so I made sure that that was implemented here it all depends on where you start the uh, 
shooting. So when you're shooting to the right, it actually the bullet starts a little to your left, and vice versa. So that is how it allows you to uh, um, shoot things above and below you. Because if it's, your shot started, you know, to the left and right of you, then it would never hit something above you, obviously. But um, that's yeah. how they did it in the arcade. Uh, so, so Thomas uh, Thomas Yench has a question: What state is the game in? Well, this is all, this is done, this part, the only um, part that needs to be done, in my opinion, are, is a uh, more fancy death explosion. Right now, he ex explodes, but in the arcade, it actually has particles coming out, similar to the dwarf um, explosion, and then it also uh, oh, okay. it, it, uh, corrupts the, uh, not corrupts, but, you know, it makes holes in the, in the play field. <laughs> um, so, oh, wow. I already know okay. how to do that. I do it. Um, but yep. We don't want to... Reveal that. Um, <laughs> there's also there's one sound effect I need to do, and that's when you're actually shooting something. Right now, you can't really tell because there's a lot of sound. You hear the walking sound, and you hear your firing sound. Oh, okay. In the arcade, when you hit something, it makes this. It's a very odd sound. I couldn't really figure out how to do it, so I was going to reach out to Bob or something like that just to get some tips on how to do that. So, um, right. But, yep. um, yeah, so it's kind of cool. What you can do is. Uh, I basically record the game playing in MAME, and, and in MAME, you can actually turn, like this particular game has six sound channels, you can actually turn off all of them except one, and it's, uh, so I did that six times to get the uh, different channels for each sound, and that's how I was able to uh, right. flip it or pick out the actual frequencies, you know, it's very difficult, there's chords and uh, you know, multiple sounds playing, so... You know, so if you have one playing, it'll just play like the bass line. Like all the sounds from like the thing are, you know, two channels. But yeah. Anyway, so I broke that one down too. Uh, it just like listening to her, I can't think about, I can't figure out what that sound is, like what Tari sound. Is. What, it doesn't sound like anything. So I may just have to <laughs> came up with something closer. closer. So that, so with that said, yeah. uh, everything else is, you know, obviously they'll be tweaking um, with the uh, difficulty ramping and things like that. Um, and challenge mode, like I said, we have some plans for um, different um, enemies. We've already done. We did like a mummy that can actually go through the uh, the back door, um, secret passages, and track you down. The locusts mm. uh, poison you. They take multiple shots, so they start off with a large group and then they shrink down you shoot them but they hit you then your face turns green and your poison happens happens fast so we also have plans for additional um call it, uh, treasures and uh, other um, enemies involved yep um <clears throat> somebody asked uh what what is the name of your cat um that is misty why call sniffle so, Sniffles. but that's that's one of my cats. The other cat is uh, Juniper, who we call Juniper. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's yeah. always nicknames yeah. for the cats, right? Yeah, exactly. Something's we only uh, use the, the official one when we have to take to that. So, oh, I'll lower the game volume. Yeah, sorry. People are saying they can't hear you. Ah, it's all good. Um. Here, you have to man this. And if I'm playing, you have to man the questions or comments. Question, can you make John a bit louder, please? <laughs> yes. <laughs> We've taken care Answer, of that. Answer, apparently. Yeah. Answer, yes. <laughs> well, actually, we, we, I did, and I turned down the, the game volume a bit, too. Oh my God. Also, I, I, uh, another strategy about the ROM um, size is, is that, uh, you know, since there's a limited number of enemies that can be on the screen, if you see that they're spawned and on a different part of the screen, then you know that no more are going to come out. So if you can count like there's six or five, then you know that. Oh. So yeah. again, just little uh, little things to get through this. I've been able to get through all the levels, um, and I find it. There's, I found it that I was playing almost exactly. It fit, felt exactly like the arcade in my, in my mind. So it's, uh, it's kind of what we strive for. So. And that's exactly what I feel when playing your games as well. It's like this. It, it, my comment is, always is that uh, after playing your games, I am much better at the arcade game because they're so they're so close to the feel of it that uh, it replicates it really really well. The bats move Thanks. really fast and oh, pff, are fast. appropriately challenging. Like you shoot 
early on in the game when you shoot, the stuff dies, and at this point, the bats are moving quick enough that you can miss them. Oh, yeah, yeah. They're I mean, fast. They're fast in the I arcade. I feel like I'm betraying. Well, yeah, they, they, they get much, <laughs> much faster in the arcade, in the advanced version, and then when to, wait till you get to the spitting glaives, those are, like, super fast, so. Um, yeah. One change I had to make at the end, if you saw when you unlocked that lock, that the locks are um, spaced out. Um, if you saw when you were unlocking that first lock, there were two locks um, to reduce flicker. There's still flicker. Yeah, the, yep. the, uh, that door is actually a spray already. Um, I couldn't um, use anything else to do that. I wanted to try to use the uh, play field, but that wasn't going to work. But anyway, I yep. just spaced them out 16 pixels apart so I can use the duplicate uh, um, feature of the Atari sprites. It doesn't really change the game also, but it does reduce the flicker. Uh, smart. That's, things get a little flickery at that, that end sometimes. But there's really no way around it. So I uh, gave up something. So. so we're going to take a look at the champ mazes now. Um, so was there any... Um new challenges that you had to face in making this game or was it mostly about replicating the gameplay well i would say the sounds were actually the biggest challenge for me but uh um, i was able to hopefully they sound okay um yeah it sounds great then yeah, the, was, um, yeah. the other thing i don't know if you noticed uh, i was looking at our notes and uh last time we did a poc reveal of this back in uh December of 2020. Yeah. Hard to believe those, you know, three and a half. Oh my God, really? Yeah, three and a half years ago, <laughs> which means I started it probably six months before that. So this is like four years in the making. Um, if you recall the original one, I was inspired, quote unquote, to do this as another brick game based on Tutankham. Um, but I ended up rebooting the entire thing just because I didn't like the way the um, in Zookeeper it was, um, you know, the brick pattern alternating work fine because of the black background but with colored backgrounds it really the flickering bothered me um, so we ended up opting going, going for this more clean non-flickering look which I think works much better so. yeah it looks really nice thanks to Nathan it works just fine on the black background yeah this actually yeah. this probably took the most time just coming up with uh, a way to uh, we also had things like the monster generators and the uh, um, secret passage back to where it's all sprites but it was just way too flickery, so it's like, you know, it looks better, but only as as a screenshot. You know, playability it was it's not better, <laughs> so we decided to go with this uh, this little layout instead. So I think it works much better. So yeah, it it plays wonderfully. Like it it's it's super smooth. Um, now in the arc it scrolls along with you, correct? Um, um, yes. Rather than this kind of flip screen, not really flip screen, but yeah. Yeah, we kind of went... what you yeah, call it. Is there a name for it? Yeah, just, it's... Um, I don't know what you call it. But... Auto scroll? Yeah, it's kind oh. of like a... <laughs> Semi-scroll? Incremental scrolling yeah. is what we call it. It's because, uh, yeah. you know, since the scrolling on the Atari is so choppy... Um, to have that, yeah. it would have just made it unplayable, you know, in my opinion, because it'd be scrolling all the time and yes. everything's shifting by four pixels left and right. So yeah. that didn't seem like just too much. Seemed like such a good idea. So basically this we did the same thing we did with Mappy. Mappy you can't you know, it would have been unplayable too, so but also one other small not disadvantage, but uh, the map as you can see up up top is uh, on the arcade it uses the sprite, you know, it's the the resolution is much smaller, so it can show the entire map. Oh, yes. This one shows basically two screens worth. So the part that's glowing, if you see the top and bottom of the map, that shows the part that's visible right now. And then... Oh, okay, I see. Yep. Yep. And you can see right there. So on Novice, you can see where the blinking reds are. Those are where the keys are. You don't see that. You know, and then right. the blinking blues are where your treasures are. Um, you don't get that yeah. in... Um, so in standard, you wouldn't see where the treasures are, and then in advance and challenge, you don't see where the keys are either, um, which is how the, it is in the arcade. So, um, but we figured, you know, adding it wasn't that tough. So I figured uh, let's make the map a little bit more useful. Um, it's mm -hmm. it does help. Actually, one thing I'm toying with for um, 
challenge mode is uh, semi-invisible mazes, oh, you got a good where the maze only reveal itself as you're moving along, so the map will be more oh, useful dark. in that situation where, you know, but it'll be like, if anyone's ever played a Time Bandit on the Atari ST, it's a level called Dark Side Dare, where it's invisible and the walls reveal themselves as you touch them, so. Yeah, in my research, I ran across that game and I'm like, oh, this is my nightmare. Nightmare scenario. Dark mazes. Yes, That's yeah. the worst. I know a mazes lot of people don't enough, like that, but... and so I, I might not do it, but it might be a cool thing, because interestingly enough, Jurgen also found this as well on uh, online. There's a... Uh, um, article or some kind of web page about um, Tutankham and there was unused graphics in the torch um, that was unused oh. in the arcade so we were thinking we'd have the torch somewhere where if you grab it then it, it lights up the maze but you would still see parts of the maze as you're moving around it anyway but it would be a cool power up to collect so uh, again we want to try to oh, make yeah. challenge mode have different features but still feel like Tutankham so uh, you know don't make yes. that so uh Difficult. So radically different. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. it still has to be you're crawling around, getting keys. So, but hey, maybe you get an extra key. And we're thinking of having like trap walls where you cross a certain area and the wall closes behind you temporarily, which forces you to move forward and not allow you to backtrack. So, um, oh, geez. You know, just things like <laughs> Very that. RPG ish, yeah. Yeah, so, but, you know, again, just as long as it doesn't take away from the, the flavor of the game or the spirit of the game yes you know? and you know it'd be exactly. things that are incremental so oh, this one's so long of a maze oh my god yeah. now i have to backtrack yeah you can you can blame that guy for that so <laughs> again i may i may, I may it's, change it's cool them make them a little more um you know whatever i think he, I, I think he did a good job <laughs> but uh you know you don't want the game to be yeah. arduous or you know, uh, a, a, no a, a chore no, they're definitely not. I think it's fine. No, but, I mean, uh, it's, you know, the oh, yeah. Fourth. As long as there's enough time, yeah. uh, it's not even a problem. And interestingly, I don't know if you know this in the arcade, but uh, um, what happened is when it repeats the mazes, like in, so in the arcade, it'll do four mazes, and then it repeats them, yep. it adds a key yes. and a lock the second time around, and then another key and a lock oh. the third time around. So, um, oh, levels no, so, I didn't. Yeah, so even though... Well, I haven't been past level three <laughs> yeah so um so like the first level that's fairly easy when you start the second time you do it there's two keys and two locks um, and then, uh, right so it's the same thing here so you know, as, so as you okay. progress so they just put the keys in different spots in the maze no no and add another lock exactly yeah so the key you know so yeah. the key that was there originally is still there and the lock is still there but now there's another lock and another yeah. key somewhere. So, so you can imagine in the challenge mode if you have a white key and a gold key, you know, you have to get the white key to uh, unlock the white lock or whatever. It'll be a, it'll just make it more of a puzzle That's game, awesome. more of a, you know, a little bit more of an adventure without being too frustrating, so. Yeah. Yeah, you don't, you, there, there's a, a fine balance between challenging and frustrating, oh, yeah. where it's, where it's, it's just like, oh, really? Do I have to do that? And it becomes a, a fetch quest or a grinding or, or any any of those things that just detract from the gameplay. The, yep. the fun shouldn't be in the longevity of how it plays. It should be fun all the way along. Yes, exactly. So if it's a challenge and it's kind of cool, like, hey, this is neat. If I collect this key and you have to go in here and watch a whole new area and things like that. So it uh, yeah. becomes more more exciting. So this this is absolutely so you can see yeah fun. so this had this had an additional key on it that was that key wasn't there at this and the first time he did this maze so now there's two locks yeah. so so we're gonna have other options right now you can just choose between arcade arcade flip uh champ champ yeah. flip but then we'll have just like we do with our all our other games like uh, um elevated agent and uh ladybug and things like that you'll have options to play all the mazes um, you know, have them flip, you know, so play all eight mazes and then play all eight flipped to give you a, uh, um, you know, more uh, variety during one game, so you don't just have to play with them. So to make them um, are there any plans for, um, like, a simultaneous two-player, kind of where the other player controls an enemy like you did in Elevator Agent? 
No, I don't think I'll do that here. I mean, I don't want to just re rinse and repeat. I don't think it would actually work with this, to be honest yeah. with you. So, no, um, yes. I, I don't think either. Yeah. But, uh, never, never know. Yeah, so I think, what you, yeah, and again, come up with. yeah, what, what happens if we come up with some ideas and I say, oh, let's save that for an original game, you know, so I'd like to make an adventure game where you have two players, you know, yes. you know, you know, like a light art or. RPG where you, know, um, you, know, you choose a fighter and you collect different weapons. You can play, you know, have a sword or a bow and arrow or something like that. That's, you know, yes, yes. S something like a golf, but a little less action because of the lack of sprites. You can't have 500 sprites chasing you, so you have to balance it out with making the game challenging based on, you know, maybe increase the uh, enemy AI a little bit, put some puzzles in there, um, additional yeah. weapons. Maybe. Like that, so. Some, something similar to like the Intellivision um, AD and D games. Yes, exactly. Yep, yep. That's what I would. Uh, I love those games. Yeah, so yeah. I think an like just when you said bow and arrow, I'm like, oh, that one. Yeah. Yeah. So I think a, a, like an engine, Any question? An, an engine like this would work pretty well with that. And obviously, you'd, you'd be able to shoot up and down too. So, interestingly, I uh, oh, yeah. designed all my uh, twin stick. Oh. I designed all my yes. um, kernels to use the ball sprite, but I don't use it at all. So. Because uh, really? to get Nathan involved wow. in this, because he's not really a Toonkong fan, I think he's becoming one. Yeah. Um, he did. You know, um, <laughs> I promised him that uh, one of the power ups we'd have would allow you to shoot up and down, which I'm not going to do. Uh, which I've already told him because <laughs> you I, tricked him. <laughs> yeah, because at that point it's not Toonkong anymore. You might as well just go play with some more or no. something else at that point. So I mean, the whole. It, yeah, exactly. But anyway, so the ball isn't there, so. My point being is that this engine could be used to be able to shoot up and shoot in a bow and arrow or something like that. So. Um, we have a question from Thomas. Uh, question, Harmony or Encore? Presumably will it work on them. Yeah, will it, will it work on just the plain Harmony? Or does it require um, an Encore? I have a, no, I have a Harmony here. and But it all depends. You know, I've, Fred has used like different... Um, hardware in these things themselves so it all depends on your harmony to be honest with you. works in mine but right. it may not work in mine, so <laughs> it's more likely to work in an encore but um, um, i've yes. tested on both and they work fine and this will be 32k i know uh when i originally designed mm -hmm. uh elevator agent and turbo there was you know yes. i thought you know there would be i know fred has replied that there's um yeah, I was gonna. I was gonna ask you about yeah, the progress the enhancement made on, modules. On the hand, exactly, but you know, yeah. I don't. I don't like to be ahead of the technology where you know you release a game and you got to explain everyone it's been a customer service nightmare. Like buy the wrong. No, yeah. it's you've got the wrong one. Does, or, or you or, need to buy this ad. Or it doesn't work at all. Exactly. Right now, it doesn't work at all. I can't even yeah. point them to a solution. So a little frustrating. So, That's true. So from here on out, thirty-two K games until there's an actual something in the field that can support something bigger so um right but anyway but it is it is cool that the the enhancement module is is almost come to fruition yes exactly so yeah i'm hoping that fred also releases just a new harmony encore plus whatever he wants to call it for people that just want to yeah spend the money i mean I, I think i think it's a good solution for people that want to keep their harmonies and just slap on enhancement module for a cheaper price you know i think it's a good option but um, i'm hoping that, i think so i'm too. hoping that he comes around and says that oh we're also going to just offer our harmony or car plus where you know we don't have this huge uh supercharger if you think hanging out. <laughs> yeah and the two games that uh that need that are, are turbo and elevator action right yeah and then things like turbo uh arcade. chris's uh Zevious will need it um i'm actually working with Zevious, him to yeah. finish that so we're um Oh, nice. Yeah, and, uh, you know, I'm sure there's some other games uh, that would, would use that. And, and it's also, you know, technology. It kind of stops me from wanting, wanting to make any 64 gig games until we have that out there. So, which, which, which makes sense. And yeah. The point is you want people to go play your game. So, and, uh, you know, the last thing you want to do is have someone buy your ROM and not explain. Well, yeah. you can't actually use it. So, well, You have to use on Stella, Stella only or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Who's playing this? Anyway, this you or Darcy? It's too good to be dark things. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, that's Ouch, fired. That hurts. Uh, that hurts. You said something true, but it hurts. <laughs> um, I'm actually going to reset it and play, play on a, a harder level. Yeah, novices, uh, I've learned from my mistakes that, you know, typically I've 
made novice not easy enough and i want you know everyone to be able to play this and just get a feel of the game and not have to be frustrated yeah. so um novice uh, it was good it was very it was, good it was, it was a good level it was a good yes novice level, i scaled I it down so it's not too easy but you know again if you play like uh let's do arcade flip now i've set it to advanced so this should um replicate the arcade Difficulty level, you said? Yeah, it's close. Except, oh, except you're going. It's, you, it's, yeah, you're going yeah flip, it's so. 100 percent as though it's a different map. Oh yeah, I don't yeah. even recognize it. It's like, oh okay. Yeah, I knew to, on? I knew to look, and <laughs> so I was like. Yeah, I, I was gonna I try could, to be. Um, I could sort of cheeky. vaguely tell. Yeah, I was gonna but... be cheeky and just change the colors and then pretend they were new mazes. <laughs> but I'm like, you know, someone's gonna recognize it and say, "Hey, I paid for 16 mazes. I, I only got eight. I That's would right. never have recognized it if you hadn't like said flip. <laughs> yeah, be like, oh, it's a whole new maze. Yeah, yeah but yeah. It, it really does change the whole game, uh, in my opinion, uh, yeah. as far as I like, play. So you're playing advanced, so you only get oh, one. Warlord has a one um, flash bomb. Just like okay. just like an arcade, I, but, I, and, and you'll get a new one on each life. Uh, but that's it. I completely. Oh my god, the bats are fast. I completely forgot about the flash bomb. <laughs> I I always forget about those power ups when I play games. I'm yeah. like I'm so concentrated on not dying that it's like, oh yeah, I have a complete. Also, if I do remember them, I I'm like I gotta save that. <laughs> yeah, for for just such an occasion, like yeah, when I have no lives like, left, yeah, yeah, and I'm right. and the game's over. <laughs> so Warlord had a question. Uh, yeah, estimated release schedule. Um, right now oh, we're yes, good question. Yeah, I mean the big hang up, and this is for all my games, is trying to find an artist to uh, um, do the artwork. For it. So um, it's been a, it's been it's been a, the, the struggle is real. Um, <laughs> yes. So yeah, yeah. So I mean, it could be never. But I'm hoping. Oh get, no! I'm hoping we get someone. Yeah, I can do sounds. I can tell you right now, I cannot do art. You know, um, that no. that would not look pretty. That is my one failing. I can yeah. I can pretend to do sounds. I can pretend to do graphics. But, yeah, I, uh, I cannot pretend that. Ooh, artist. artwork. Yeah, exactly. That just would no. be embarrassing. So, um, so right now the <laughs> the desired release schedule is um, I'm planning on attending the um, Long Island Gaming Expo. For those of you on the West Coast, that's it. New York State, um, Long Island, underneath Connecticut. It's about a three-hour drive from here. So um, that's in August, um, August 9th, 10th, yeah. 11th. Uh, spoke with Joel down at a PRGE, and uh, he offered us a free table there, which is very nice of him. So just giving him a shout-out. Anyway, oh. if you're in that area, you know, Marky Cal. Nice. So we will be there. And uh, I think some other uh, – I think um, Eduardo from Code is going to be there. Um Nice, great guy. Yep, exactly. Eight bit widgets guy, the guy that did the turbo coupler. Um, he's driving this. Oh, okay. I think he's going as well. So uh, um, it should be fun. It's so it'd be good, uh, good, good tune up for a PRG, which is like uh, six weeks after that. So, so if all goes well. Again, we're kind of trying to get our print schedules set up as well. So we need to have, uh, you know, we'll be printing some of our old games. But um, I think I announced at some point that we're going to be publishing Jurgen's uh, uh, Ruby Q. So, yes. Yes. Yep, so that's going to be done. Congratulations on that. Yep. And also, um, we're working with um, Carlos, the guy that did a Rayman. Um, he did um, The End and um, Stratabox. Oh. Yeah, we yeah. are yeah. in the midst of working on a deal to reprint, uh, republish uh, um, The End and possibly Stratabox. Okay. We're working with oh, great well, games. So, uh, you know, well sure yeah. And some, some oh, other, that's, that's awesome. yeah, some other things. Again, our um, goal is just to be able to allow. You know, I know how it is to be a developer and work on your game, and then the frustration of not being able to sell it or let people uh, enjoy it, especially in physical form. So, you know, that's what we're, yeah. we're just trying to offer that service to people if, if there's no other avenue. Because yeah. have... that's just such a joy to be able to hold in your hand a game that you made uh, like it was back in the day and, and have the satisfaction of, uh, you know, that nostalgia and and feeling that you, you put out this game, right? Yeah. So it's such a, a great service that you're doing. Exactly. Yep. So, yeah. So um, 
along that same line. That's why, like, Nathan usually does the graphics for my games. I mean, the artwork has been really, really generous at this time. But, you know, he's yeah. also basically my lead publisher guy, too. So, you know, reprinting Ruby Q and these other games that we're looking into. And Nathan's the gatekeeper for that. So, he, you know, he has plenty of other... He, he has a lot of responsibility to get those done to begin with. And he's also working on, uh, you know, he's committed to doing... Um, artwork for a couple of Christmas games as well, so uh, um, that's why I, I know he would jump on this and good, but um, um, so anyway, yeah, if anyone out there is interested, you know, we do uh, have a competitive salary uh, we have benefits, we have a lot of, <laughs> a lot of yeah, exactly, a lot of cachet with the uh, uh, classic game <laughs> crowd, so, you know dial oh, me up, you know, and the good news <laughs> is that, you know, Something's Nathan wrong and I with will the do the stream. Which is usually the, the, the time suck is what he calls it. We just need someone to just some in, uh, volume of the game inspirational uh, artwork. So, and uh, we'll we'll take it from there. So. Uh, Master Casey has a question. Uh, this arm game is the f is this arm game the first one that will also run on the Atari Twenty Six Hundred Plus? Oh yeah, no, of course not. No, <laughs> it's, it's, it's all depend on you know Atari, and I know they are working. Um, there's a plan. <laughs> I, I think perhaps unstated was of your games, maybe? Of your game? No, it, it's no different. Uh, okay. All the ARM games are kind of in the same camp. Yeah, okay. Yeah. It, it needs to constantly communicate for the 2600 Plus to work with a game, an ARM game. It has to constantly communicate with the cartridge. Right now it's a dumper. Well, it just dumps. Yeah, no, that, that's yeah. not exactly true. But, um, yeah. Oh, the, I'm talking out my ass. Yeah, yeah no, no, the big... Cause, We've had people out there, that, uh, a guy that actually bought a couple of my cartridges and ROMs. He actually, he was able to burn like Gorp oh, onto a cartridge, just a plain 32K EEPROM and put it into his 2600 Plus and it worked perfect. Because once it reads uh. it um, and Stella identifies it as a um, ARM game, Stella runs it. It's not communicating with the cartridge anymore. anymore. Oh. So One second we've lost. Oh, we just can't hear his volume. One second. Oh, is this off? It's just us. Everybody else can hear you. It's okay, our headsets. that's good. Uh, yeah, I think these are out of battery, but they didn't say they were out of battery. Volume adjustments still needed. Still needed. Just turn the game sound very low. Way down. We've played a lot, so... People have heard it, so yeah, you can just turn it right true. down. Okay, we're going to have to put him through the speakers. That's fine. Okay, John. Okay, that's good. And cool okay. Yeah, so, yeah. So, so the, uh, so the, the real uh, challenge is real challenge just is updating the dumper code, code to be able to read the... the, 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 the on an ARM game, an arm the game, code is code in a different is area that is currently uh, not being able to be all read by the, 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 the dumper. So... If you can get that code get that off code of the cartridge and put it um, onto the 2600 Plus, Stella will run it with with a few issues, which uh, uh, I have been speaking with Atari about it because, you know, we all want these things to work. Um, yes. The, one of the issues is that once it does get there, you know, um, uh, Stella will automatically like configure a Quadtari or a dual button joystick or something you know, something like that. What happens is, uh, since the 2600 Plus doesn't actually support those things, you can't move the joystick doesn't work. So there'll have to be some oh. changes to sell itself. So, now I've to, I've right. recommended to them that they just disable that code in there completely because if it can't yeah. support a Quadtari, you might as well just Don't. not have it detect a Quadtari. The same thing for a two-button joystick. Um, obviously, the best solution would be to be able to change it so it can actually detect and use a Quatari or a uh, two-button joystick connected to the system, but I don't know if that's possible. So. But anyway, yeah. anyway that's, that's a lot of discussion here. Though. Obviously, <laughs> we're, we're working with Atari. We want our games to work there. Um, and there is progress being made. Um, so like I said, that, that guy, it's just a uh, you know, guy that bought my cartridges and uh, the, the ROM, he was able to just burn know. it to a 32K, you know, so, um, and get it to work there. So it's good to see that uh, it works. So. I just, I just, um, died, but 
there was two characters in a row. I may have mistimed seeing it, but Darcy, I think, also saw it as well. There was a bat. It and, seemed like the, the bat didn't get shot. The, it went, the bullet went through the bat and hit the uh, guy behind. Oh, Is it supposed to maybe not get hit? No, it, it only the tip or the beginning of your shot. Um, like if you're, a guy runs into the trail of the shot, it shouldn't work. I mean, it could have just, it could be a bug, so I'm not saying that. But, I mean, um, I'll, I'll have to look at the air. Also, we, yeah, we just bugs. saw it. And so yeah. what you just said might be the case. It might be that what we saw was the trail end yeah. uh, touching it. Yeah. And not, so it might not be anything wrong at all. Yeah, we yeah. can definitely look at the, uh, the, the replay and I'll, I'll see if it looks like a bug, obviously, uh, I'll, I'll go and change it. So. Can we tell what time this is in the replay? Uh, oh, yeah, we can. Um, in the recording, it is at... One hour, 15 minutes. If you want to write that down... For what, if you want to watch it on YouTube, it's around one hour fifteen. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, Double down says another thing that my uh, um, picture is frozen. Luckily, it's a flattering shot. Oh. It's not like me like <laughs> blinking <frozen>. or <laughs> drooling or something. But um, I just look oh. very concerned. I very concerned. <laughs> and I'm not that concerned. So. <laughs> it, it is very concerning. Uh, yeah, we can fix that. I don't know why it does that, but uh, eventually it just goes, nah, we're done. At least I could hear you, I'm guessing. Okay. So, yeah. Oh, the echo is because uh, John is is on the speakers because our earbuds stopped working. <laughs> yes. So I think that's the only reason. That's the echo. I'm going to turn sure them down. I'm not sure do anything about it. I'm going to turn them down as much as I can so that you guys don't hear them very much. But yeah. Oh, and then John, if you could yell, that'll account for the <laughs> no, lower. It will not. Okay. <laughs> It'll just raise him on both things. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, what what else should we look at in the game that we haven't looked at yet? Maybe. <laughs> Kitty. Um. Kitty. Can you still see? I think you guys have you gotten through. Have you gotten to through the fourth level yet? Have you found to uh, come? On, on one of them, I did. Oh, did. I got up to like level seven or eight. Okay, yeah. that's cool. Not on challenge mode, mind you. No. <laughs> oh, this is... But on easy mode, I did. Yeah, okay, that's good. And have you done advanced? Because um, challenge is just tougher advanced, but without the bonus features that are supposed to be part of it. Yeah, yeah so exactly. So there's no yeah, point. You're not going to get much out of it. So. That's for later. Yeah, no, I think this is a good first reveal. Again, this is the first time anyone's seen this being played um, yep. in, in public. So uh, this is uh, this is wonderful just to be able to get uh, some feedback from people and uh, see you guys play. And, I mean, did you think it was okay? Yep. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was it's awesome. Really good. Oh, yeah. my God. I love it. <laughs> it's very smooth. Now I can I can play it on the 2600 and get ready for the arcade version. <laughs> and the uh, the art is amazing. Like the Yeah, uh, the graphic, especially at the end oh. where after, <laughs> after you open both the locks, yes. like the big, big graphic. I mean, that's really end. cool, but I mean like the creatures. Yeah. Like oh, the yeah. mobs are just amazing. They look amazing. <laughs> Nathan, I mean, Nathan did a great job with all the graphics. Yeah, so there was, there, there was a lot to do in this one. So, uh, but yeah, he did. He did an amazing job as usually does. So, and like the title. It's oh good. yeah, <laughs> everything. Everything's so, <laughs> so good. good. Yeah, it's good. Excellent. Um, so if anybody has any last minute questions for John, um, looks like Double um, Down has a um, question. I'll just answer it to him. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's why James. Uh, joy to be controller is having issues and it's because uh the way our games detect to distinguish between a quad tari and a uh, and a two button joystick you know quad tari has that line disconnected as well um, so if it's yeah well, so yeah if, if it could be connected that would that would help i don't think there's a way software for me to fix that because then I won't be able to automatically detect a quad tire in four points. Yeah, because uh, that's um, Double Down's joystick we're using. That's why he's asking uh, those questions. Yep. Um, so, uh, what what are your public plans of your game map of public plans 
that you can talk about right now so you can update everyone on what's coming up. Uh, you've already stated this one is going to slated for a release physically at an upcoming uh, convention. Yeah, we're shooting for August and we'll release a ROM at the same time. Well, we'll add to the store with the ROM sometime after that. Uh, you know, that's that's best case scenario. So what we're trying to do is, you know, to get our print jobs going, we need to have all the other stuff done as well. So, so it's not just printing one game. You got to print all the games. And the aforementioned artist issue too may hold that up. But we're hoping to, if that doesn't work out, then we're hoping for um, for PRGE. As far as of other games yep. concerned, I've announced. Um, uh, what is it a uh, oh, ripoff? Yeah, I announced that a while ago. I started that like 15 years ago. So that's uh, someone's asking about the it's on its way. Yeah, so, yeah. So that <laughs> that one is we have that and three other games right now that we're working on simultaneously uh, here and there. Um, so the plan is that uh, I'm working on a second game, which uh, is not ripoff that we hope to reveal next month um, in a similar, yep. you know, similar form here, and then. Excellent. Another game each month after that, leading up to August. So, um, so, so that's a plan. But there's only a plan to release two of the games this year. If again, if we can get okay. the publishing and the artwork um, done, so, so it'll be. Uh, um, is is the Champ Games Baseball still in the ongoing list, or is that um, uh, is that in the short list? Let's it's say it's not in the short list, but it is something that you know. I think we started that four years ago as well. Um, yep. I know Nathan is... We've talked about having those graphics and basically rebooting it um, and starting over. As far as what we had looks good, but you know, it's, it's really just a, a proof of concept. So um, we'll, we'll right. obviously use what we've already started and then basically do a, a soft reboot on the whole thing. Uh, okay. The latest... Okay. Uh, um, driver and stuff like that so yeah so the big hold of that and i'm, and I'm putting any pressure on nathan because obviously he's working with six thousand other things but you know that's it's a graphic intensive game um so yeah. uh, you know once those get done I, I feel like the game will move along pretty quick after that but um like i said we have five projects in the works right now that we're um, trying to get done and um you know that's a 10 lot. other after <laughs> that so it's uh and we're also working on um with other developers for publishing their games as well. And I'm also lending a hand on some of the games to get them completed. Um, oh, so, nice. you know, there's, there's a lot of development to be done and a lot of, you know, prep work to be done just for those games as well. So it's, uh, and this is still a part-time job the last time I checked. So it's, uh, <laughs> I wish <laughs> yeah. I could do this full time. Uh, yeah, but, uh, exactly. Um, so. I, I don't think people uh, realize this is a labor of love. Yes, exactly. Even for someone of your skills and status in the Atari 2600 homebrew world, it is still just for fun. Yep, exactly. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, um, yeah, so that, those are plans this year. I see someone just asked, Question: Any plans for vector games like Black Widow or Tempest? Unfortunately, those are Atari IPs. So unless we get Atari sign off on that, we won't be doing any Atari things. Not saying we won't. You know, I'd be more than happy to work with Atari if uh, we can work something out. But you know, we're, again, we're not we're not taking people's IPs and like throwing it in their face. That's not what we're trying to do here. We're just making games that people want to play. And if uh, you know, it's, if it's a low risk and uh, um, you know that's kind of how we approach things you know so we're not going to make donkey kong we're not going to make pac-man we're not going to make anything right. that's obviously flirting with disaster pac-man who would make a pac-man yeah game? exactly i mean <laughs> nobody i love Pac Man. that's love dangerous territory <laughs> you know, it'd be nice if we, uh, someone could uh, get the uh licensing for those but you know. like i said we're, we're cool, a victim cool. of our own success not we champ programming or champ games but uh um you know the whole yeah. retro gaming community as a as a whole because you know right now it's, it seems to be pretty seems hot right now you'd think it would have died off by now but it's been like uh <laughs> you know, think it just keeps getting bigger 20 years i don't know how yeah, exactly so you know it's like so we're looking forward to prge this year and uh you know yep. we have a booth already bought um so we're looking forward to that awesome so. yeah me too it's always the 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 big fun event of the yep. year 
Yeah, we get yeah. everybody gets back together and sees each other. Yeah, it's really fun. Yeah, exactly. Um. Oh, and your 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 game as well. Like your your original Mountain game. You, you mentioned that here and there. Mountain. Yeah. 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 We did start that last year, so and it's come along pretty well. Again, that's a pretty big. It's probably a little bit to. Uh, um, what do they call that when you try to do too much to something? Too much. Ambitious. Yeah, ambitious. That was the word <laughs> I was looking for. <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah, but uh, trying to scale it back, but that one I may have to wait for a, a suitable 64K, um, you know, way to play the game on a on a multi car before I pursue that one. So, uh, uh, right. yes, but that one's always in the forefront as far as uh, something I want to do. So, uh, um, before I retire yeah. from Atari programming, I want to at least maybe that'll be my swan. Don't speak of that. that no, that'll be my swan song. So. <laughs> <laughs> your final game yeah, exactly. yeah. so but yeah right now we don't have yeah, any right plans to slow down at least for the next few years so we have just way too much backlog now excellent is isn't making atari 2600 games your retirement plan yeah it would be nice yeah i mean it would be uh nice like i, I just moved into a new house here um a couple months ago it's i think i mentioned to you it's a 115 year old victorian that we're kind of fixing up so it's uh Very but nice. one of the draws here is that it has a workshop that I'm going to make Champ Games headquarters. So, so um, Sweet. yeah, I'm excited about that. So, uh, so yeah, so it's got plenty of, plenty of big plans for Champ moving forward. And uh, thank you guys for playing. It was nice seeing Darcy actually have fun with the game. It was great. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a yeah. game he can do pretty well at. Yeah, That's yeah, good. he did great. So it's, uh, it's, as long as it's I'm very, I'm mode. very excited about this game because it's a different type of game. You know, I do a lot of shooters, out of, you know, Yep. platform game so just be able to do a dungeon crawling uh adventure game that i have fond memories of playing as a kid you know it's a it's really a, a treat so it's a treat. Um, yeah it's it's a really really fun game and now that there's a an easier level everybody can enjoy it and not get their ass handed yes, to them. exactly <laughs> with the arcade level difficulty it is a hard hard game yep. that is for sure yeah. i i did yeah. forget to mention that um one thing that Nathan complained about with the uh, game itself was that uh, um, you you're always constantly moving forward. You know when you uh, um, when you're playing, um, if you flip the yep. right the left difficulty on A, then you'll stop. So you'll have to move push to move the joystick. I probably should have oh. mentioned that. So uh, oh yeah, okay. it's a cool feature. You, I personally think it makes the game harder. Certainly with a one button joystick, because then you lose the ability to fire backwards and move yes. in its particular direction that's how it allows you to do that you know with the forward momentum while you're moving like to the right for example if you center yep. the joystick and press the button it'll fire backwards but you know if you flip it on yes. a so and you have the joystick centered you're not going to go anywhere <laughs> so so you know it, it's constantly moving right? yes, yes yeah yeah I it's like pac-man it moves like pac-man yes, yeah yeah exactly yeah. so but if you flip that i thought it's an easy feature to put in um, I personally think it makes the game more difficult, yeah. so it's it's a cool thing. And the uh, right button, right um, difficulty switch controls how fast your double click has to be to activate the bomb, and that's only for uh, one button joysticks because we were testing it. Turned out the B setting is the best one anyway. Um, the A one, you have to click it a little bit faster, but it reduces the chance for false positives where you accidentally activate it. So. Um, that's Obviously, smart. we recommend yeah. a two-button joystick or a dual joystick anyway, like the arcade. But, um, we, you know, yeah. we always strive to make the one-button version as playable as possible because we know 90% of the people are going to play that way. So that's why I that's yeah. why I play that way, so we can all suffer together. So, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, the playing with the dual joystick is actually is really, really good. Yeah. Yeah, it makes it really easy to play. Especially when it's like that. Yeah, especially when you like have what, a like, single yeah. unit. Yeah, no, very yeah. nice. When, so. when it's all together as one, like an Ed Laden controller or some alternate. But you just get a piece of wood and zap straps and yeah, yeah tie it all together. <laughs> yeah. Put two joysticks on it. That's what I do. I have, I have There's two, also I a lot of 3D printed yeah. uh, solutions for people who have the original yeah. Atari joysticks as well. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yep. yeah we have uh, a guy, 8 bit widgets, the guy that does uh, the turbo coupler. He makes a great um, um, joystick coupler as well. And then. Um, um, right. Of course, you have retro game boys out there that he does. Uh, he makes yep. uh, dual controllers. But to Darcy's yeah, point, I saw him I, post about it. Yeah, I, I, t I take I saw, uh, the way I like to play is I take two Wyco joysticks, which are my favorite, the ball ones, 
and I uh, bungee cord them to a piece of plywood. It's 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 awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah. To me, it's, with the Leaf yeah. controllers, it's yeah. perfect. That's that's the best way to play for me. So, and it costs like well, I happen to have the white coats. Same. You probably have bungee cords. Yes, and, and a, a piece board. of wood. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And these are the white coats I use as a kid. So, so no, no, no chargers. Yeah. Anyway, if you don't have a board, you could just like take a spare shark and turn it upside down. A shark? Yeah. <laughs> uh, we, we have a question on there from Double Down saying, can dual stick be plugged into two control of ports or only with a quadtari? Yes, it can be plugged into two control of ports. The only difference is that you don't have a free port for your save key. So you can still save high score. So. Yeah. So there's lots of It's options. really cool so that you can use the quadtari. Yes. And save yeah. that extra port. That's, well, the yeah, original reason awesome. why the quadtari was invented, which I am a co creator of, me and Nathan Tolbert was yeah. because when I made Wizard of War, which is a two-player co-op game, and voice, I was not going to make that game unless you could have co-op with voice. The only way to do that was to have two joysticks on one port. So gotcha. that was the impetus to actually get that created to begin with. <laughs> then, um, so we'd be able to use it for things like two-player robot war with both with dual sticks. It was awesome. Co-op. Oh my God! Yes, yeah, so that's that's a dream come true right there. And then things like this with Tutankham, and, you know, uh, and the yeah. aforementioned uh, secret uh, dual stick game that I'm working on as well. Another one. I still can't figure it out. I still can't figure <laughs> out. There's a lot of two joystick arcade games, so it's yeah. it's uh, it's a challenge to figure out which one you're you're you might be releasing. It will be revealed. That's, that's very I exciting. think uh, it's not the next one I'm revealing is also a secret, but I can say that it was in the news recently for some reason. Um, it's an obscure game. Oh. But, um, oh. And it happened to be a game we were working on already, but it's one of those um, um, games that I enjoyed playing as a kid, but it turns out Nathan hates that game too. And I guess in, <laughs> in retrospect, I mean, I can see its point that the game you know, need some help um, because it probably wasn't as fun as I imagined it or remembered it was. <laughs> but uh, the cool thing with Champ Games is that, you know, we're, we're going to put a challenge mode. We can make novice a little bit easier, make it, you know. Um, okay. So it will be enjoyable. And once Nathan signs off on it, um, he's already done all the graphics, but once we uh, get that going. Oh. And then the one after that will be the dual stick, I think. And then, um, yeah, then we have uh, – couple other games to that so um and all all those games awesome. will have playable if things go well this summer um at the prg and hopefully two of them for sale two of them will be one of them and, wow and the other one so oh great so everybody can try out all the games yep. that are in progress and at your booth yep. and the plan yeah. is also these games that we're republishing to have those available as well certainly more copies of the other games we have so we're, you know we'll have uh some, some good uh good opportunity to, to pick things up if you're looking for that so you're gonna have to expand the size of your booth now yeah actually it's had pretty a dual cramped booth in there and, last um, time yeah um, i had actually bought a larger booth this time but then went back to a single one because unfortunately nathan can't make it um he had uh, oh that's right yeah so yeah. it was going to be double we were going to rule the world but then, uh, <laughs> uh, so i slimmed it down because it's probably just going to be uh, yeah. just to keep things solved we'll, we'll save the big uh the big booth for when nathan's there so um, yes, yeah. but it'll be it'll, 20, 25. It'll be, it'll be, it'll be, yeah, so, yeah. Well, I, I think we've taken up enough of your time. Yep. Um, thank you so much for uh, letting us reveal this incredible game and making this incredible game. Yeah, and making it, of course, <laughs> you, you and Nathan. Yeah. Um, so, just to reiterate, when will people be able to get their hands on the first demo yeah, of this game? That'll probably be this weekend. I just need to like update the website. Um, put in the demo stuff, you know, obviously I'll have to reduce the number of levels you can play and things like that. So give people a reason to wait for and want the uh, full version. Um, so I would say this, this yeah. weekend, I'm hoping I'll post information on my, uh, my Facebook page and my webpage as well. So that's champ.games, in case you're wondering. And also it's uh, Facebook slash champ.games. So, but the dot is actually spelled out in there. <laughs> which is weird d-o-t yeah exactly yeah so, mm -hmm. um yeah so yeah we'll, we'll have some this weekend i i didn't see any major bugs that you guys uh saw no. maybe that one where the shot went through and the title maybe we would have we might have missed seen it or something or yeah. you know something could have happened yeah well, yeah it, what what you said about 
the graphic being if it's on the back side of the bullet that, yeah that could easily have been because it was very close to me yep yeah, 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 yeah. yeah we tried to make it like the arcade because that's one of the also challenges of two comms that you shot takes a little bit of time and you can't just you know if you just shot all the time if people are running into the bullet it'd be a way too long. and the bats are fast that's they yeah, are like, very fast they're, yeah. they're fast like like I noticed that at a certain point it was like, oh, the bats do not die just because you shot where they were. <laughs> they're gone. Like the bullets are fast, but they're also fa they're fast enough to get away sometimes. Yeah. 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 Okay, yeah. cool. So, yeah, thanks for the time. Thanks for playing, guys. Appreciate it. It was always nice to oh. see uh, the fruits of our labor being enjoy. enjoyed by uh, by other um, enthusiasts. So we appreciate it. And uh, we'll definitely be posting oh, that course. demo this, uh, this weekend, and hopefully uh, people enjoy it as well. So thank you very much. They will. I guarantee they will. It's super fun. Wonderful. So thanks, John. And uh, we will talk with you soon. Next month. I'll, I'll let you know. Once we get you, once you get that second game playable, I'll... Uh, I'll can't I'll wait. Up, okay? okay. Yep. <laughs> don't, don't, make, don't make the puzzle to unlock it too hard. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Not too hard. Okay. Nice balance. I promise. Okay, guys. <laughs> okay. Have a good one. Bye, okay, John. Thanks. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye. Yeah. Awesome. Um... Really good game. Yep. Like, like, really fun. Um, I don't know if we... Uh... The, yeah, the only problem uh, with John Champo games is that, like, you're not surprised when they're awesome. <laughs> I know. Like, uh, that's, that's okay, the well, yeah, The bar well, is high. really over... good game. Thanks uh, a lot. He made the impossible possible <laughs> well, again. Uh, <laughs> the oh. is loose. Treat ball the time, is kittens. Loose. Loose. Oh, it's treat ball time. Do we have time. new rules for these? Uh, no rules, but uh, we do need the box, so I'll get the box if you want to load up the treats. How many treats do we put? Um, I'd say ten in each. Are they these greenies? I mean, this uh, bag? The bag, yeah, the bag. Ten each? Yeah, ten in each ball. Yeah, you're excited. Who, who, uh, allowed this? Let's see. Thomas! Thank you, Thomas. Oh, do you think you're that cute? I am that cute. You I are. I am that cute. Please give me... No. Nah. Let's get the cam, webcam up. Bit of a mess. A lot of joysticks happening. Well, let's straighten it out at least. No, you're just here. Can you close that? Yep. You're just, you're just he's, weaponizing he's your. He's nosing right into it. He's just, he's just. He knows. Tari's in the box. Get in the box, people. Come on. He cats. knows that he is cute enough to get away with crap like that, and he's not <laughs> wrong. He is not wrong. He is super cute. Let's see the holes. That one is ready. I didn't, uh, this one is. I didn't it's intentionally adjust any of them, but I don't. Uh oh. This one's ready too. Okay, cats. There you go. Two balls. One for each of you. Oh, and the camera is in good position. It's pretty good position. Is it a 4K camera? It is a 4K camera, actually. It's not set to 4K because it it's too much. It's actually, mm -hmm. I think it's set to 1080p or 720. At 4K, it <laughs> it goes nuts. Look at all this max. It's out of control. <laughs> just, they don't even have to hit the balls. There we go. Watching ads Atari. to feed the cats. Two cats enter. One kitty leaves. And then the other one follows him. <laughs> After right. all the snacks are gone. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny because Atari can snarf. These are too wide. But open, I think. likes to steal the snacks. And uh, Sprite doesn't leave the zone, but maybe doesn't eat them quite as fast. I don't know. <laughs> is that true? Who eats the quickest? Uh, Sprite definitely eats the quickest. Okay. Atari likes to take the treats away, which oh, allows... No, I mean, which one consumes the quickest, not who takes the longest between snacks? Uh, Sprite is much faster at eating. eating. Oh, okay. He's Just like gulp straight done? Straight up eating. Like gulp okay. done. Right. Atari's about... It takes about twice the length of time, three times the length. Oh my god! Are you guys seeing that Atari is controlling both of the balls? Mine, mine, both he's of like, them. He's like, I'll smack this one. I'll smack. Oh, that's not working. I'll smack that one. <laughs> this one's not coming out fast oh, enough for me. Oh, Sprite Sprite's gets, like I'm playing. He's got some, got some hits in, and he got one. But yeah, Atari is monopolizing it, which is pretty <laughs> funny. It's pretty funny that he can. Need a bigger box of stadium. This one's fairly large, but we could go a little bit bigger. When, maybe when I there get... There is room on the screen for bigger. Oh, yeah. We could go like 50% wide and 50% uh, longer. So when I get another bigger box from a shipment that's a little bit bigger than this... Because this is actually made out of two, but 
Sometimes there's bigger boxes. Mm -hmm. I'll uh, I'll make a bigger one so they can both step in. Cause... And, it, and it only needs to be high enough that the ball doesn't come out easily. Yeah, so this could be cut down. Yeah. Which <laughs> and, and... Sprite's kind of just watching, yeah. waiting, waiting to pounce. Yeah. It's like, you, you bat them around. You get them out. Are we done? No. This one's empty. This one still has some more. You can get it. They've completed one. Oh, somebody likes your socks, Darcy. Oh, thank you. Let's see them. That's oh, why I wear them. Nice pattern. I wear them so that someone might notice. <laughs> Polygox. I have some boring Since. socks and they are at home. <laughs> oh, Nathan Strum was here. Hey, Nathan. Good job on the graphics. Very good job. Yeah, he was, Just uh, beautiful. Uh, he was answering questions. Oh, good. Yes. Yeah, I, I'll have to read the chat yeah. <laughs> after I was playing. Um, I think we played quite a bit, so don't know if we need to play the game anymore. Oh, Kaboomer from AA. Thanks, guys. I'm now a new Tutankham fan. Me too. Like, uh, when I first played the arcade, when, um, arcade game, when John announced the game and I, I played, I was like, this is this is impossible, this game. It's so hard. <laughs> and when a game's so at a certain level where it's too hard, you're yeah. just like, why am I going to play this? I only yep. make it to level three, and then yep. I die. Um, That's why I never wait, spent any quarters on... Uh, <laughs> or very few quarters on video games. Me too. Only ones I, I could play decently well, because I'd be like, oh, my, my money's gone. Uh, all gone? Just like the cat treats are all gone. Okay, out of the box. Come on, out of the box. There we go. I'm gonna put that away. <clears throat> K Boomer would be a good nick for me. Oh, that's that's funny. K Boomer, K Boomer. <laughs> that's good stuff. Um, so let's take a look at what's coming up on the show. If uh, you haven't, sorry, Thrust. Did you mean like? Okay, Boomer. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. K Boomer. It's hilarious. Because <laughs> somebody's already named Ka Boomer. Um, if you haven't downloaded, I've updated my game uh, two days ago. Uh, ah. My Pack Line 2600 game. It is much better. Um, what was it uh, needing? How could it be much better? Because it seemed pretty good. The gameplay me. hasn't changed. Okay. Uh, the graphics. Oh, have. okay. The. Um, Graphics for Zero Page Homebrew at the bottom um, from a suggestion from Al Nefer. He said, put black in behind it so you could see the text better. Oh, okay. Uh, it was very difficult to do mm. <laughs> for my skills. Uh, <laughs> for everybody else's that are devs that have been making <laughs> games for decades, it's like, what's the problem? Um, uh, and it looks so much better. And I updated the font as well. Um, Thomas suggested some of the numbers weren't quite right and i updated those and they look a lot better now as well um and also i redid the logo at the top packline 2600 and i redid the 2600 with the new font uh -huh. that i updated for the for the logo now for the for the zero page at the bottom i don't think i have it on the cartridge why no i'm pretty sure i don't well, let's just load it up and take a look so I can show you what the hell I'm talking about. I need to get new earbuds, obviously. These oh, because don't... The, they don't have very good battery life. No. Yeah. And I use them during um, the Atari Awards and also interviews, and that barely lasted like an hour and a half. And they were lasting two hours before, so that is not acceptable. Uh, okay, let's transfer it over to the SD card. Yeah, did you have fun playing? Kitten? He's like, I got a couple treats, but that Atari, he's mean. He ate them all. Oh, I don't know if it works the dip, Quantari. <laughs> Let's just plug it in directly here. Okay. Okay. 
There we go. So I'll just show you what I mean. So the zero page homebrew at the bottom, there's black in behind it now. And yep. also I separated out each of the rainbow so that uh, there's a black line, then the next color, black line, next color. Now it looks way more close to closer to this, yeah, yeah. except the lines don't go through there. Yeah. Um, so it's more readable. And um, I changed the font so it's all kind of got that thick, thick font. Yeah, for all the characters, yeah, really I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. There probably could be some, some more improvements, but like I said during the interview, I'm not an artist, <laughs> a graphic artist, so there's only so much I can do. And then I changed the 2600 at the top as well to match the new font. Um, now the zero page homebrew is 48 um, characters across, and because there's a 48 character uh, 48 pixel kernel not characters pixels and every letter is five pixels plus one space five pixels plus one space and that leaves one is that red off by pixel no it's just not as dark um so that leaves a line at the right hand side of a black um so that meant the rainbow was right up against the Z mm. because it's 48 from the first pixel in the Z. So I had to use the ball to make one more line because it shares the color with Playfield to do down there. The problem with using the Playfield in behind the zero page is now the Playfield, I'm using hardware collision. So Playfield is now touching player. Uh. And that's how I was judging whether the Pac-Man ate a dot or not. Uh. So I had to store the collisions before it drew the zero page at the bottom. Because I was checking collisions after it drew the whole screen. And it was saying, you're colliding constantly. And the score was going, <laughs> which is kind of cool. <laughs> so I had to store the collisions. If the font is not thick, it's big boned. Big it's, it's chonky, chonky font. I liked it when the line went behind the ZPH text, except for the yellow. The yellow really threw it off, yeah. But I, I think it looks cleaner, and it gives the implication the lines are going through it. The blue rainbow's too dark. I like it. I like the blue rainbow. Uh, well, really I have to say, this. on there, it is dark enough to be invisible. On your monitor, it looks, it looks good. Yeah. But on there, I can't see it at all. Yeah. Let's just make it big and see. It is yeah. quite dark. It, yeah. it, it actually... And if you it, look at my logo on the top there, um, if everybody looks at my rainbow on the zero page... Yeah, it, it looks like it's... It, looks, it doesn't look like you have a blue line. It looks like the green line is bleeding blue. <laughs> right. That's what it looks like. So I could right lighten now. it up. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'm not too happy with the orange, but it, there really isn't better orange on the on the 2600 well the orange does look brown but that's fine <laughs> yeah i know yeah kind of sucks maybe bump up the color brightness of your rainbow a notch yeah it, it colors are so tough but i'll i'll play around with it play around with it some more um well looking at this screen it looks good it's only on the stream it does dull where i look at it and it does look like like it really does look like it's just bleeding off the green and not an actual blue line and that's the problem with calibration and compression and color representation you had to pay 30 dollars for <laughs> orange or only 20 or only 20 dollars. No, you know what that means <laughs> that's hex uh brown is not a color it's just dark orange <laughs> Uh, Kaboomer says, cool graphics. We'll have to play this weekend. It was there, was there a sound for small dot munching I missed or only the power palette? It's, it's a subtle sound. I have it quite, I have it quiet and I've turned down the video game sound too. So let me, crunch, 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 crunch. So it should sound like somebody eating crackers. <laughs> Because in the 2600, it was wafers. Oh, that tactic doesn't work anymore. Uh, anyway, 
But I've played this to death on the show, so you don't need to play it anymore. I just wanted to explain the uh, the graphics there. Uh, it's been a lot of. It sounds like static. <laughs> crunch, 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 crunch. Uh, those those sounds are totally temporary, so they will be changed. Just I'm not good with sounds, and I wanted to get it out as soon as possible. So maybe the next round I might do the sounds, but probably not. They're not as exciting as doing like um, <laughs> logic and updating graphics and stuff. So what's coming up in the show? Some exciting stuff. Uh, next episode, we're going to be playing some Jaguar games, Jumping at Shadows Mothline. Now, uh, the virus has spread to the Jaguar, and that is Packline, made on the Jaguar called Mothline, ah. skinned in the Jumping at Shadows from Reboot. So everything looks like the game Jumping at Shadows. Hmm. I'm, I'm not familiar. Like your character? Yeah. You may not have played it. It's a platformer, action platformer. It's very cool. We're also going to be playing uh, Maze for the Jaguar next episode. Uh, Thrust says I usually do sound last too. Yeah. I just put temporary stuff in it. Uh, then on uh, next Friday, so far I've scheduled Stellar Drive Mars, Berta and the Butterflies, and Paddlefield. Uh, may change. Then a 7800 day. Um, but I just added this to the schedule. We will have an exclusive look at Microvaders for the Atari Lynx. That's a space shooter. Very cool space shooter that I'm very looking forward to playing. Plus a live video interview with the developer Carl Forehan from Songbird, who is known as Songbird, on uh, about his new game. So I'm very looking forward to that, of course. As John said, a secret homebrew from Champ Games next month. Who knows what it could be? Who knows? But he, said it's he not gave the clues twin and he's expecting someone to figure it out. So. Yeah, he said it's been in the someone news. Someone knows. <laughs> someone knows. Nathan knows. But <laughs> or I mean, someone will figure it out, is my guess. I think so. I can't think of any video game that's been in the news recently that is like of that era. Hmm, somebody might figure it out. Um, let's see. Um, and then uh, Developer Spotlight and Steve Engelhardt. I still have to arrange that. I don't know when that'll be. And the 7840th Anniversary Classic came Gaming Countdown. The 40-year anniversary of the 7800 is coming up next month. So at the end of next month, we'll be playing every single 7800 game in After Dark. That'll be a lot of fun. Uh, let's see, 59 games, so every single classic game. Um, and then we're going to be doing a developer spotlight on Lawrence Staveley, probably much later in the year. And now that I've heard Xevious is coming along nicely, maybe we can pair that with a developer spotlight on Chris Walton. Um, because that's kind of what I was holding off on to do the developer spotlight on him, so we, we could do a double feature of the reveal of the updated Xevious and talk to Chris Walton as well. What? Why is the one point alert time restricted? It uh, So people don't use it constantly. It should be a pretty low uh, restriction time. One point alert. Which alert is that? <sniffs> hey! He likes to chew that. Watch, mm -hmm. watch that bad cat. Um... What is the what is the timeout on that? He's just licking it now. I'm just licking it. I'm you just... don't need to worry. I'm just licking. I'm not gonna bite it. Let's see. Champ points. <sniffs> the one that's help help. Something's wrong with the stream. <sniffs> it's only fifteen minutes. It should be available. No, it's not Discord. <laughs> this isn't Discord. Yeah, the help should be available. Help. It's only fifteen minutes. Help. I just don't want. Help. Something's wrong with the ZPH stream. Is something wrong with the ZPH stream, though? No, I think they're just testing. <laughs> they're just testing it. <laughs> uh, I tried it after it was mentioned. It couldn't be hit again when John was frozen and could not. Oh, okay. Hmm. You want to join the Discord? Oh, you got it, Gamadev. Awesome. You got the coaster. We sent that to him because he won it a little while ago. Uh, yeah, the Discord. Uh, just join the Atari Age Discord. Whatever, whatever this is. Well, I'm in the 
Atari Age Discord. So if you have a login on the Atari Age forum, there is a link to the Discord from the Atari Age forum. And that links with the forum login. So that's how you do it. So a lot of the developers are there. Um, you're very welcome, Gamma Dev. Okay, uh, we did not do treat time yet. If you want to sneak in a treat time before we go, this is the exact right time to do it. <laughs> and we can clear away this double joystick, get some room here. It's treat time. It's yum, time. yum, <laughs> yum, yum. Oh, there we go. Cats are happy. Happy cats. Okay, let's get the treat time started up. I will get the betting going if Darcy would like to um, get down the treats. Where are they? Like, oh, oh, they're there. That's right. Here's the treats. I'm going to get them down. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you get down the bells, I guess. I got it's not them. Much prep no, this. I'm gonna leave the bells where this one can't touch That's them. That's probably a good idea. Otherwise, he'll be like, "Where are my socks? Revolution! Revolution!" Oh, he's touching the belly. Uh, Puss and Bets time. I, are They are not stoned. Yeah, politics are risky in public forums. So, hmm, your mileage may vary. But um, I have found that the Atari Age community is very, very open and welcoming. And so is this channel. So if anybody's harassing you here, you they will be gone. Yeah, personal opinions. We, we tend to stick to games and gaming here. And positivity. There's always at least one idiot around. And if there isn't, it might be you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you, if you go overboard, then people will be like, yeah, okay, okay. But um, yeah, we're, we're mostly talking about gaming here. Yeah. How much time left for the betting? There's about 30 seconds, so pick your cat. Oh, looks like Atari 3 Plus is not covered. But, so somebody could sneak that in at the last second. Oh, somebody's covered it now. We're ready for all of them. Yeah. Okay, cats. Atari's, Atari's out in the uh, hallway prepping, psyching himself up. Okay, we got about 10 seconds left. Are you ready? Okay, kittens. Let's reset the scores. Let's go to the treat time cam. Reset the points. We're at zero. Okay, ready? And go! Hey, Atari! Psst. No, down, down. We gotta Over get here. the opponents here. Okay, ready? Go! Nobody! Somebody! Oh, double ring! Congratulations to both cats. One point each. Oh, Sprite puts in a second point. Tari follows close behind. 2-2. Two, two. It's all tied up. Sprite is a very fast cat. He's got three points. Tari's keeping pace just behind. He's going to have to step up the game because Sprite is usually faster. And he's done it. He's done it. Atari's pulled ahead. Oh, it was a Sprite. Double oh, double ding. 4-4. Four, four. Oh, Sprite gets the lead back. Oh, 5-5. Five, five. It's a fast game today. No, that wasn't enough. Didn't hear it. There we go. Sprite's at six. Atari's at five. Atari's at six now. It's neck and neck. Any cat's game. It was a slight ring, but he got it. Oh, what's going on? Atari's got two treats there. Can he eat both at the one same time? Was... Oh, Sprite's... One of them wasn't an actual treat. It was a treat flake. Oh, okay. Oh, Atari's distracted. But... He's eating the treat flake. He's behind. Oh, double ring, but Sprite is ahead. He is on game point. It is 9-8. It is 9-9. They're tied up and it's over. Oh, it's go. all over. Sprite got it. 10-9. Neck and neck. What a tight race. Good kitties. Good kitties. You should get a cat playground for Sprite and call it background and call the alcove ball. That they Atari's actually been in a game. It's uh Oh yeah. In ZPH the game. And it was before Sprite was around, so he couldn't make it into the game. Um, but they were playing with balls in the game. 
fastest game ever. I think that was the fastest game ever. It was so fast. Okay, let's see who won, who predicted correctly. It was Sprite by one, by one whisker. That is right. Let's see who got that. Sprite one and two. Mike Latow splits the purse with Prow7. Congratulations, Mike Latow and Prow7. Mike Latow getting the most money. Like Ball, Sprite number five, and in the Atari code. What? You should, you should get a cat, like a real cat playground? I don't think I'm quite understanding. Like ball, sprite number five <laughs> in the Atari code. <laughs> nope. Gonna have to type it out in full for me to understand that. Okay. Um, so I think we are done here. Very exciting show. Very happy. Gonna play more of that after. <laughs> uh, and practice some more, especially on the uh, hard levels, because that, that is hard. That makes it very, very hard. Have you ever seen a cat playground? I've seen some cat. I've seen the ones with the tower, with the balls that go around. You seen that one? Like the triple layer, um, and the balls are kind of stuck in loops in, in a tower form, and the, bat, the cats can bat them, and they go zzzz. I've seen only on the floor version of that. I haven't seen a tower version of it. Oh, okay. But I, I'm imagining what, what do we have in that uh, bottom screen? Uh, scores. No, I mean in the gray that's... That? Yeah, is that just... That's the video output ah. that's flipping out. So we'll switch away from that. Um, I've also seen cat puzzle games where they have to slide things across oh, to yeah, get the yeah, treat. Oh, yeah, yeah, I've seen that. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. And some of them have multiple layers. I think I only saw squirrels doing that. Yeah, squirrels are good at it, too. <laughs> Anything that's enticed by... Um, yeah, just DM, DM me what you mean. And I'll take a look at it, the cat playground. Because we're always looking for things to amuse the cats or things that we can do on the show, too. We tried to turn the ball uh, game into a game. Mm -hmm. or the, but it just it doesn't work because Sprite doesn't participate. Mm -hmm. It's just Atari dominates it and wins by a mile. Well, the, the, the Tree Time game only works because they both participate in the yes, old days equally. it was just atari <laughs> dinging the bell yeah and pixel was like my pro pro is bringing the bell for me i don't need to do any of that <laughs> nonsense right. yeah sounds like something that the jpl glitter bomb guy would make to torment his neighbor's cats a cat playground <laughs> there used to be endless cat videos on tv during the night young cats playing in the cat tower cute yes yeah, cat videos are good. Cat videos are what uh, the internet runs on. <laughs> Get a few more Bernies just to make sure to tell the cats they can't touch them. Yeah, that'll be a game. Uh, I don't want to encourage that, in fact. <laughs> Leave the Bernies alone. Okay, uh, we're just babbling, so it's time to wrap it up. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Uh, make sure you tune in uh, on Tuesday for more awesome gaming. What if the zero page word of your logo in the game is light blue instead of white to match your logo here? Um, I didn't really like the light blue. I did experiment with it. I was very close to using the light blue. Mm -hmm. um, but it just didn't stand out as much. Just like the pellets in the game, in the Pac-Man yeah. game, they're not, they're not actually white in Pac-Man. They're like salmon color. And I changed it, and then I went, ew, no. <laughs> We're going back to white. So it's flexible. You know, colors are flexible. I'm just trying to make it something I like and something that can be readable and stand out. Yeah. Um, so thanks for tuning in. Uh, Strawberry System 30, 22, Master KSI, Vitoko, Double Down, Thrust, Gamma Dev, Dan ABC. Uh, Prow7, Mike Latow, Polygox. Um, who else? Looking for a unique name. Ivory Tower Collections. 8-Bit Poet. Kaboomer. Nathan Strum. Thank you for making the awesome graphics in Tutankham. Um... Uh, to Bublik, 
Looking for unique names. Uh, one replay can't. Splendid Nut, Diamax 40, Atari Warlord, and of course, John Shampoo for being on the show. You can make the tall logo much taller, even taller than the game. <laughs> yeah, I, I could expand out vertically, but I kind of like the small. I like, I really like how thin the color lines are. Yeah, yeah. I love that too. Yeah. And and I want to make well, it... I, that, which, that doesn't mean it wouldn't also look cool if they were thicker, but I really like that. So. Yeah, and also I want to use the same logo in every game I make. So having it as small as humanly possible is is good. So I think that's as small a font as I can make it while still being able to read zero page homebrew. And it takes up 11 vertical lines, which isn't too much on... 192 uh, that is recommended. You can push it more, but um, so I want to take it over to the next game, the next game, the next game, and so a tiny, tiny, thin thing is is ideal, and that's about yeah. as small as I can make it. I think it looks really good. Uh, I think the blue line thing, if you address that, that yeah, be strong colors can be altered. I I I play with them, so they'll still they're still in play. Uh, what, what do you record next? We're going to be playing, uh, Jaguar next on Tuesday. Uh, and we're at Tuesday at 6 PM. So four hours from now, but on Tuesday, um, we don't, we do, uh, play the Atari 8-bit, uh, Starberry system. So we do play home computers, but just that one. Cause we all play just Atari. Usually sometimes we branch out. Um, Good stuff, and I know about the Joy Two B issues of Champ Games. Genesis uh, Games is due to Quad Tari support. Learn something new every day. Yeah, yeah, it's complicated. All these different controllers and the Quad Tari and how they interact. Um, so uh, we're out of here. Thank you, Darcy, for being here. I did so much. <laughs> you played while I talked. Woo! Then I played <laughs> while you talked. Um, so we'll be back on Tuesday. Uh, so we will see you uh, then. Actually, we can hand you off to somebody. Let's see if anybody's broadcasting right now that we can. Uh, anybody that I'm following? Meh. Let's see anybody playing retro games that are applicable, that are retro enough. Hopefully Atari, but you never see anybody broadcasting any Atari games. The most they play is like NES games. So you're like, eh. Then I just look for somewhat, somewhat retro games. Oh, somebody's playing Bomberman. That's pretty cool. Um, nope. 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 Ah, uh, we'll go with Bomberman. How about that? Who is this? Mike Mate he's got enough viewers. Yeah, he was in my list too, but he won't even notice somebody uh, rating him. <laughs> <laughs> he's got so many hundreds of viewers. Oops, not that. Ah, uh, it doesn't remember. Raid. There we go. So thanks uh, for tuning in, and uh, we will be back on Tuesday. Um, so we will see you then. Bye-bye, uh, everyone.